Hey everybody, welcome back to the Film Tangents podcast. Jake here, and on the other mic is Edward. And we have returned to your lives to uh, brighten your days on this uh, Thursday, February 23rd. And uh, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, we got some good news um, out in the world. Mm-hmm. Not Film Tangents news, it's uh, film news and... yeah. News, news. Um, so, if you haven't heard, Harvey Weinstein <laughs> uh, has been sentenced to an additional sixteen years yeah. in a uh, an R word conviction, uh, putting former movie mogul behind bars for life. Um, yeah. Ooh, so I don't know. So I don't. You know, I'm I'm sure you feel the same way, Edward. Uh, we were talking yeah. about this off the podcast, but uh, this is fantastic news. Yeah, um, this guy's a complete piece of shit. I love how they, yeah. uh, they, <laughs> dude, they gave him 20 years, right? So, so they no 23 years. So he's he was already serving a 23 year sentence. They dragged mm-hmm. his fat ass out of his jail cell, <laughs> put him in court, and we're like, Harvey, yeah. you have an extra 16. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. All right. <laughs> so there's, a, there's an extra 16 on top of the 23. Exactly. He's got 39 years. From my he, understanding. Yep. How old is that guy? Do you know how old he is? Probably like 70 or right? Oh, yeah. 70 he's in his, 60. Oh, yeah. He's easily in his 70s, I think. Harvey Wines. Like either that or 60s. He is 70, exactly. Wow. Look at that. <sighs> You got oh my him. God, dude, he looks like a <laughs> for for creature. him to outlive this, he would have to live to be a hundred and nine. It's like he comes out of jail and he's just like, <laughs> "I'm out." He's like a hundred and nine years old. Excuse me. Look at that yeah, right? stupid walker. I love that walker that he does to like try to get sympathy. Yeah. Like his lo- like yeah. th- this whole thing with him walking around with the. Have you seen those videos? I don't think he's getting sympathy from anybody. No, of course. That's why yeah. it's so stupid. Yeah. Like, that, that's why it's so dumb. Like He's walking around. Like, you've probably seen the videos, right, of him walking around, and the reporters mm-hmm. are coming up to him. They're like, Harvey, Harvey. And he's got, like, one of those, like, granny walkers, you know, mm-hmm. like with the two the two hands. It's yeah. like, dude, no, your lawyer's a fucking idiot. Uh, th- this yeah. was, there's no point in doing this. Like the fucking yeah. lawyer was probably like, "Yeah, we'll give you this to try to garner a little bit of sympathy, dude." No one cares, okay? You could be, you know, limbless. Them just dragging your ass on the ground, like mm-hmm. like in Venom, it was like your arms, your legs, like a turd in the wind. <laughs> it's like, dude, and no one would care. Yeah. <clears throat> Hey, so, I want to uh, add to this. Um, I like a little sneezy, so I apologize. It's like something funny in my nose. Yeah, get that under but, control, Edward. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm actually... Uh, <laughs> I'm about to... <laughs> God. <laughs> All sneezy, man. Like Isn't a cartoon there like a... character. <laughs> She's like, it's you! It's... <laughs> Isn't there like a, there's a Rick and Morty skit with like that that sneezy Mac Deluxe? You know what I'm talking about? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I Are? thought that was that's not Steely. That's different. No, oh, yeah, yeah, he's the guy. Oh, it's who's a like car. Selling cars, right? Uh, it's, no, there's like a car. No, no, no. There's a car <laughs> that it's like a car commercial for a car that instead of having a horn, when you press the horn. It just sneezes. It goes like, ah, shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. Then at the end, it goes like this, Sneezy Deluxe. <laughs> it's like a little car that sneezes. Oh, man. But <clears throat> I wanted to add to this because I'm seeing this. It was reported five hours ago. Mm-hmm. R. Kelly has also been um, resentenced. Whoa. Today's been a big day for these guys because if you look it up, R. Kelly – who was already serving 30 years for sex trafficking, has now been sentenced to 20 extra years. Oh, on top of a... Th- uh, you said 30? Mm. Damn, man. Wow. Oh, yeah, shit. so he got 30, and I got 20 on top of those. So R. Kelly's like Donzo. Wow. I think his music is still in streaming, in streaming services, funnily enough. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it is. 
When did you remove? Like, and I know because his, one of his songs popped up on one of my playlists the other really? day. Really? Like that? To me, that's the question: is like, when do you? Is it appropriate to remove an artist's music? You know, in these situations, is it appropriate? Do you think, or do you just leave it up there? So here's my. This is my thing about um, separating the art from art from artists, right? Uh, mm. I I'm a firm believer in separating the art from the artists. Because people, human beings, right, aren't ever wholly 100% evil, right? Mm. Um, sure, there's a few that we could argue about from history. Um, yeah. But, you know, um, no one is 100% wholly evil. Um, and, and I think this is important for, you know, on a side note, any writer to understand. So... Mm. For me, it's really easy with separating the art from the artist where you're saying, OK, um, it, it's it's almost I, and I hate kind of using this phrase, but it's almost sort mm -hmm. of, a, you know, um, don't hate the sinner, hate the sin kind of thing. Not really, because mm -hmm. um, I do still hate, you know, I, I do uh, look down on uh, certainly someone like R. Kelly and, and Harvey mm -hmm. Weinstein. But the, the so the problem with this is is so again to wrap this up the 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 way i look at it is if i'm listening to an r kelly song right um you know like i was listening to his song the other day uh that i'm a flirt song it's a great song man yeah, and i'm yeah. like you know i can't pretend like i don't like this song just as much as i did um you know uh um 8 years ago or whatever um before all this came out or at least was mm. super, super public. I know he's always been a little sketchy. Um, I mm. can't act like this isn't still a great song. So mm. for me, it's a simple statement of, I love this part of R. R Kelly, and I hate the bad parts of him, right? right? I don't like what he did in these areas, but I like what he did with music. And I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with that, you know? He's, no, a terrible, no, let me, he's let me... obviously a terrible person, right? But there's nothing wrong. I don't think with saying, look, he did a lot of bad, but mm. he did some good. Right. And part of <laughs> yeah, that's, that, like, that's like that Chappelle. Yeah. I, that, I was just about yeah. to say the same thing. It's, it's the same thing that what, what Chappelle was saying. Right. Yeah. Um, cause, cause then how far can we really go with it? Cause you brought up Harvey Weinstein. Well, Harvey mm. Weinstein produced a lot of fucking movies. Chances he are, did, if you're listening did. to it, you've watched a Weinstein produced film sometime yeah. in the past month maybe you, even you've the seen, week maybe today yeah, if you've seen if you've seen any if you ask a person uh, you know if you've seen any like great 90s movies or any of tarantino's movies from the 90s they were all produced by weinstein they were all weinstein movies yeah i, I mean that's the he thing produced full fiction and all those movies you know kill bill all those movies yeah that that's the thing man i i the the problem with it is it's it's like where do you draw the line Right. And, and for me, if you want to draw the line somewhere for yourself, that's totally fine. Right. Like yeah. if you want to draw the line at, Hey, this person was so bad that I don't want to listen to their art, be, especially mm -hmm. because, you know, and even like, maybe you have a certain person, right. Where they actually brag about what they did in their art, right. In their music or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to listen to that. Fine. Right. Uh, but the problem is, is like, where do we draw the line? Cause then it's like, okay, so you're not going to listen to R. Kelly and you're also going to boycott all Harvey Weinstein movies, produced movies, mm. right? You're not going to watch any of those. Okay, well, you know, this movie, um, movie X, right, had uh, a great, awesome uh, film crew, except the second second um, actually got convicted of a heinous crime. So, you know. Or or the or the first assistant cameraman got convicted of of something horrible and he's no longer in Hollywood. So I ah, can't watch that movie, right? It's like how so far does saying, it, how far does it go? You know, basically you're saying like you know it's like a, a like slippery slope kind of thing. Yeah, which look, or it's like it just keeps trickling down. Yeah, and and that's I certainly don't think we should be taking uh, um, R. Kelly's music off off of streaming services because it's no, like no, look, let me. We had a caveat, you know, yeah, let me interrupt no. you and not a Go caveat ahead. for a second. Go ahead. What if, what if, because I'm, I'm not going to play the most advocate with you because I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Um, 
and I don't even you know I don't even want to get in the other side of this thing because I think it's like not really you know it's not really worth discussing to me um yeah at this moment anyway but what if as a, as a way of punishment right for people like R. Kelly <laughs> what if we make their music free would that be interesting yeah I mean for, yeah. yeah why not you know yeah I think that would be great. Like, I think that I think that would kind of like solve like a lot of the moral issue with people because like a lot of people could just be like, oh, I don't want to listen to his music because I don't want to support him. You know, I don't want to be putting money in his pockets, you know, because he's right. a criminal and I don't want to help him out in any way or even to help him pay for his lawyer fees, you know. Sure. I think it would be great if the, if it would be like, oh, R. Kelly, you're serving 30 years in prison and your music's free. <laughs> so anybody yeah, yeah. can sample your music. Anybody can do anything. Anybody yeah. can do anything with your music and they don't have to pay you a penny. You know, that to me, that would be great. Like, to me, there would be like no worse punishment than just basically being like, we're making your music free domain, you know. <laughs> it's like this giant kick in the balls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's like, okay, we're imprisoning you and then we're, we're imprisoning you and we're making your music free, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think so, that would be that would be fantastic. Um, that would be only, great. The know. only problem is how does how would that work? Because they have to pay, don't they have to pay him to keep his music up on, in their library? Isn't that kind of how it works? What do you mean? So, like, I'm Apple Music, right? Mm -hmm. I want to provide R. Kelly's music. In order to make mm -hmm. it free, don't I still have to pay R. Kelly out for his music? Well, but what I guess what I'm saying is that. They they would just like it. It would be funny if, in some legal way, you know, they could yeah, make yeah, it yeah. to where R. Kelly just has no ownership of the music anymore. Right? Yeah. No, I I got you. I got yeah. you. No, which, that makes sense. Which like I don't know how much of that he owns anyway, because like I know that it's like something where it's like it's like him and whatever label it is and like whatever music group or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, what you're saying is right. Yes. If if. If he still, if he owns, you know, like whatever part of his masters he owns or whatever, whatever copyright he has, they would still have to pay him some money, you know. So yeah. he wouldn't, yeah. So ultimately it would kind of be void. But to me that would be funny. Yeah. No, it would be. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, oh, let's just give, like, you know, I don't know, just something, you know. It's like, oh, for every movie that are the um wine scene has made money for we're gonna have like a free movie day <laughs> and today you can go watch if there's a movie if there's a movie theater playing any old weinstein movie then it's like free you can go watch it you know yeah do yeah, shit yeah. like that yeah because he doesn't own those movies like tarantino movies but something right. like that yeah well, because yeah, he doesn't even have that company anymore right so he's not no. getting he's not getting a dime if i rent pulp fiction right at no, this I don't point. think so. Because I no. think so, a bunch of people like bought that company or whatever. Yeah. Um, no, they sold that thing. I don't even. I, I don't know how much. I don't know like how they're making money. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. For for me, I don't know. Separating art from artist is it, you know it's it's hard for certain people. It's it's easy for me, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. willing to look at somebody and say, look, like this person did terrible things, right? This is a bad person. Um. But, you know, this thing that they did, this certain song, this movie, this whatever, um, is good, right? And, and I'm okay with saying that. I don't, I don't have any problems with saying that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I do understand the whole money aspect. And I almost, I kind of didn't even think of that when I was making my original point. Um, I understand, you know, not wanting to line their pockets. Um, but it's like... You know, look, I'm not going to go, I'm not going out and, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird, man. It's, it's weird. Now, Cause it's like, how much, am I, how much am I paying R. Kelly by listening to one of his songs? You know? Yeah. Well, now let me bring this up. This, uh, trifecta, the, the three, um, horsemen, <laughs> the three horsemen of, of, of cancellation. Um, cause we, cause we've spoken about, you know, we, we spoke about Weinstein. We spoke about R. Kelly. There's one missing. Oh, um, I know who it is. There's an update. Who it is? Tate, yeah. man. Oh, no, not Tate. Um, okay. Not well, Tate. Well, we can get <laughs> a Tate. name, too. <laughs> but Bill Cosby. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that guy. Because because you know that Bill Cosby, like, um, you know he got released, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. 
It was like Dude, unfounded. He looked like, he looked like a nightmare when he came out of yeah. jail. And he got released because they were like, well, it's unsubstantiated, so we can't keep this guy anymore. Let him go. And I don't know if you were aware of this, but I, I'm aware of it now because I looked up, you know, Weinstein, and then I saw that R. Kelly was trending. And now we know why R. Kelly was trending, and it's because both him and Weinstein got their sentences um, pushed upward. But I'm mentioning this about Cosby because I don't know if you knew this, but it says Cosby bans a comedy tour for 2023. Oh, Jesus. Do you know this? That sounds <laughs> horrific. This is Cosby plans to tour in 2023 amid a sexual assault controversy. Oh, no. Get him the fuck out. <laughs> oh, Lord. Who the heck? You know what I want? But the thing is, is there are people out there that are going to buy tickets. Yeah. And what I want to know. What Absolutely, I want to know is dude. who are these people? Like, are these yeah. people that don't have internet and like don't know? Wait, no, but they'd have to have internet to know he was putting on the show. I wouldn't be surprised if certain comedians got behind him and like helped him or like promoted him. Like honestly, dude, I wouldn't be surprised if he weren't like on Rogan. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh God! Yeah, there's so so. Here's something I will say because what you're bringing up is actually very interesting. Comedians, mm. they're a little too tight of a circle. I think. Um, mm. I think they forgive a little too much in in the comedian space. Would you agree with that? I agree with that. Yes. So an example, right? Christ- all these, all these comedians. All, oh no! All these comedians have already been forgiven by the other comedians. Yeah, so so and and look, it's case by case, right? So Louis C.K., I'm mm-hmm. totally willing to, you know, I'm willing for Louis C.K. to be forgiven for what he did, right? Um, yeah, person, yes. Personally, right? I think yeah. uh, it's it was stupid, it was dumb, it was inappropriate, but look, mm-hmm. you know, it, it got fame goes to your head, right? Um, it, it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. Uh, I want to make that clear, but. Um, People, you know, he made a mistake. He did something stupid. Mm. He did something, you know, that was fucking rude and inappropriate. Fine. Yeah. Um, it was a long time ago. You can't, you can't hold something over someone's head forever, even, no matter how dumb it was. Which, you know, it's pretty mm. fucking dumb. But, um, you know, but then there's things like like Chris D'Elia, right? Mm. Like I don't know why he and and. Theo Vaughn left that podcast because he had the King and the Sting. I remember that with yeah. uh, Brennan Schaub, and mm-hmm. then it became the King, the Sting, and the Wing when they got brought Chris D'Elia on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's this guy doing here? You know, this guy got, um, you know, this guy got caught, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for like it wasn't involving. And, and, minors yeah yeah i i mean it's just yeah. like you know um and i was just kind of like what's going on you know this this isn't um like louis ck's whole thing this is actually mm. really fucking weird and predatory you know this guy was mm. like grooming um you know grooming minors he was sending sex uh it says right here yeah he uh Led to the exchange of more, yeah, he had an exchange of more than a hundred se- uh, hundred sexually explicit photos and videos via Snapchat God. in a period of six over hundred, yeah, in a period of six or seven months in twenty fourteen and twenty fifteen. Many shared mm-hmm. when the girl that was talking about was seventeen years old. Mm-hmm. God, man, allegations just- that Delia sexually abused her, mm-hmm. asked her for explicit pictures when she was seventeen. I mean, you know, it's disgusting. You know, and, mm. and you guys are gonna have a podcast with them now. Yeah, <laughs> I I just don't. I'm, I'm like, like you're, guys, you're... this isn't this. That's not a you know stuff like that. That's not a mistake, right? That's mm. just fucking. Oh, that's on purpose. That's disgusting. Yeah, no, they did that. Yeah, yeah, that's disgusting and evil. Uh, but yeah. but even so, like what Louis did, Louis C.K. did was on purpose too, right? right. But it's too, uh, it, and it's you know, look, draw draw your line where you want to, but. Um, he falls behind the line to where it's like, okay, that's a mistake, right? Mm. That's like, yeah, he chose to do it, but it's something to where, look, it was just a dumb thing that he did in the moment, right? Um, mm. This guy, Chris D'Elia, uh, it's like, dude, this guy was, this guy's a fucking predator. Mm. You know, this guy's a habitual mm. predator, and you guys are yeah. going to do a podcast with him? 
I I was totally confused when that when they started doing that. Yeah, uh, I and I wouldn't that, even want to be breathing the same air as that guy. Yeah, no, I don't, don't want to be friends with someone who's who did that <laughs> shit. Yeah, and, and that's the funny thing about it, isn't it? That get back to I guess to get to the original point, and it is the that how this stuff happens, you know, because like I said to you. It's like I wouldn't be surprised with like somebody like Cosby, you know, if it's like, oh, now he's in the Rogan show, you know, and they're like body bodies. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's like. I don't know what it is about. I don't know what it is about like that group specifically, but they are really quick to just forgive each other and just like let bygones be bygones. It's like, oh, I guess Crazy Leo is cool now, you know? Yeah. 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 It's a little odd. I would say you could definitely go too far. Um, yeah. Because you could go way too far with the cancellations, the cancel culture, and you know it's a moot point at this point. Mm. Um, we've all heard it before, right? Um, I, personally, I think I feel that cancel culture isn't is on the down, on the down and out. I, I don't think it's that bad these days. Just mm. not not from what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of stuff get canceled these days, right? For mm. bad reasons, at least. Mm. Um, they slowed their role on that because um, I think what happened was the corporate powers that be realized that, hey, people are going to keep buying stuff. So let's just not cancel our our talent. <laughs> right. right. Um, yeah, our own IPs and, and yeah. money making machines. Right. For dumb yeah. things, for tweets in 2003 or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, I think so. I think the cancel mob like lost a lot of its leverage. Um, but. You can also go too far on the other side as well, where it's just like, yeah, this guy did all this stuff, but, you know, um, he paid his price. And it's like, you know, bullshit, man. Um, you know, it, I don't know. It's just like Chris D'Elia does all that shit and then he just comes right back like nothing happened. Like, fuck you, mm-hmm. man. Fuck that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, and, just helping, and just helping them, like, establish a platform, you know. Just yeah. being like, oh, I, now, now we are somehow like just adjoining you to this podcast. Like, do you, do you guys really just want to associate with this? Are you such good friends? You know, right? Like, what is this? You know, right? Exactly, and and stuff like that. Um, stuff like that just doesn't, uh, you know, it 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 doesn't it doesn't. Um, so like the whole thing with him exchanging, uh, you know, more than a hundred sexually explicit photos and videos via Snapchat like that. And, and, you know, then it says the lawsuit was voluntarily withdrawn by the accuser a little over a month after it was filed. It's like, look, stuff like that doesn't happen by accident. Right. That's not a mm-hmm. false accusation. I mean, that, that's, mm-hmm. um, you know, that that doesn't that that kind of stuff doesn't get made up right a yeah. hundred sexually explicit photos um yeah. yeah i i i don't know i don't know yeah. but he never got any he never got any um you know never got any jail time never he just got you know canceled well, for a little while yeah but but the funny thing about it is that that also it seems like he was just not remorseful you know right you know what i'm saying because like I'm not sure. I think he he did put a lot of videos on his YouTube channel. I believe he goes into it, and I I yeah. never watched him. Um, yeah, but uh, it's like the the reason why I'm mentioning this is because like at the very least with the you know high profile guys the bad things they got then you know put to the side like Louis and like um, Aziz Aziz I'm sorry right. who has a great show on Netflix called Master of None. Um, and I think I spoke with you about that because like a third season came out and it was just not the same show. It was just like a different show altogether. Yeah. Because um, I think Cassie just let it go. Um, but <clears throat> with those two guys, I kind of like the approach they took with what happened, you know, mm-hmm. because with Louis, you just didn't see him for like a while, you know, like <clears throat> yeah, he's back now, you know, like he's been back now like officially like back for like the past six months, I would say where he's been doing podcast appearances. He had a film that he was promoting, you know? Yeah. Um, and I believe that he recently did Madison square garden and was like sold out and live streamed. So I think people are embracing him. Um, even if not, you know, 
mainstream media. At the very least, like people, like average everyday people, are embracing him. Yeah, as to just go and see his shows. Those guys were quiet, you know. As he's still quiet, you know, to this day, you know, he's not really been too public. That stuff happened with CK, I think, in seventeen, and to this day, you know, and it's like twenty twenty three now, and now is when I'm actually seeing him around, you know, ending of last year and like now. Um, where uh, I feel like there's like folks, you know, that stuff like this has gone down for them, where like they just like pop up immediately, <laughs> you know, yeah. like oh, here I am, you yeah, know, I'm back, like back, you know, I never left, I was always here, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I take somehow I take issue with that because it feels like you're not really taking accountability, you know, right? Yeah, it's just like go, go, you know, go away for a little while, go away. Yeah, um, I know. And even even Louis Louis went away for a while. Yeah, I mean he was. Yeah, just that's, like, what, that's what that's what that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, he went away for a while. You know, right? Um, yeah. I mean years. He went. Away, it was like a yeah. solid two years before you even. Yeah, it was like it was. Yeah, it was a while. Again. Yeah, yeah, it was a while. Like I just disappeared. Oh, like that guy just disappeared. And to be honest, like so high profile with him, and obviously it was like very embarrassing, and it was really bad, and. But in terms of the calamity of how bad it was, the Delia thing was like way worse. You yeah, know? way worse. You That's... know, and Delia didn't go away for two years. Oh. Probably went away for like a month. Yeah, no, I remember because yeah. it was right around. Um... Ah, shoot! When was that? Uh, I think it was like 2020, maybe that that mm. happened. Um, I don't know, man. Um, and I'm looking at this other stuff here. Uh, it says that in early September 2020, CNN Entertainment reported that in 2011, Dalia asked actress Megan Drust, Drust for a ride home. Mm-hmm. Do you know who that is? Megan Drust? Uh, looking it up just to see if I've seen any movies. Uh, that's, the name sounds familiar. Megan Drust. Uh, she hasn't really been in much. Looks like she's kind of a like C-lister maybe. Um, yeah, not much. Uh, we've definitely never seen her in anything, I don't think. Um, yeah. But it says that he um, asked her for a ride home from a Los Angeles restaurant. While in the car, Dalia allegedly unzipped his pants and exposed himself and started to, <laughs> you know, before Drust exited the vehicle. Um, uh, I apologize for laughing, but this is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. So, you so know, when I the, listen to stuff the, like that, I'm like, what goes through a person's mind? Yeah. You know? How does is uh yeah? It's complete desperation. Uh, yeah. And, and just I don't know, man. I, yeah, I have no idea. I I mean, I couldn't be possessed and do something like that, yeah. dude. I you, I could be possessed <laughs> by the yeah. fucking devil, and it. I still wouldn't yeah. do that. I don't think. Um. Yeah. But the so the thing is too is right. Something like that. So something like that um, is comparable to something like Louis. Um, I think the big difference is, um, you know, is location, right? So mm. the the situation with Louis was like the girls walked in to a hotel room, right, and they could just freely leave when he was right. doing that, right? Not saying again, not saying that makes it okay in any regard. Um, but I think it makes, I'm not saying Louise is better. Rather, I'm saying Chris D'Elia's is worse, uh, right. because you're in a car confined space. It's driving. She had, she probably, you know, had no means of, of getting out. Right. Um, so, you know, I would say that looks a lot worse than Louise. Um, yeah, it's certainly, let, let's put it this way. It's certainly a lot worse for the woman, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe that's a, the best way to put that. Um, yeah but uh you know again it's like something like that yeah if you go away for a few years maybe four years instead of two like maybe Mm. we could start put it's like yeah maybe you could start going on podcasts again chris delia yeah i I don't know i mean it's really really he's like a co-host isn't he that's you know that's sexual harassment dude i mean that's that's pretty bad um just in a car like that in confined space top of the stuff with the minor and everything else yeah that's a whole different beast than what you know and it was her car too versus yeah um versus 
you know, walking into someone else's hotel room and they are unclothed, right, or unzipped or whatever. It's yeah. a different animal. Like you got to admit that it's a lot. What Chris Cristalia's version of that is a lot worse. And yeah. um, my, of course, then with the predator shit, fucking forget it, man. Go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. But yeah, uh, I, switching gears you, a little bit. I'm with you, dude. I don't do know you want what to possesses people to do that? Oh, dude, absolutely. You know, and then they, and then they themselves seem befuddled. You know, they themselves are always <laughs> like, ah, oh, I don't know what possessed me. You know, <laughs> like oh, something did, man. Me. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. I don't get it, man. Yeah, that's what that's when their life becomes a musical, and they just go like, in the heat of the moment. <laughs> yeah. God. God. But what about Tate? What's going on with that? Oh yeah, so Andrew Tate. Did he free? Did he walk out? No, no, no. Um, his detainment's been extended by thirty more days. Oh. So basically, I had the complete wrong information. Somehow, I had like seen something along the lines of like him, like just like, walking out free. Yeah, so it's not looking good for them, man. Um, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Go ahead. It, it, yeah, it's not looking good for them, dude. Um, I mean, they're they're just getting like accusation after accusation. Um, mm. uh, there's a there's a they have multiple um accusations of um you know that word that i don't want to say mm. by like multiple women by multiple accusations from like the same woman i believe mm. um yeah uh it, it's 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 not looking good but yeah they extended mm. him um mm. 30 days and now it says, um, let me see here. So <laughs> Tate or someone, it says here, Tate or someone close to him has somehow continued to tweet from his account. And he has been pretty vocal about the state of his imprisonment, including the abundance. Yeah, I've told you. I told you because I was like, somehow I keep seeing tweets from this guy. Yeah. yeah. It says, including the, ab- stabbing him. including the abundance of cockroaches, lice, and bed bugs in his cell, though his accounts have garnered little pity. Yeah. No one gives a fuck, yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, don't be a sex trafficker. How about like people? People might pity you if you're proven, like you know, as innocent. Otherwise, like you're just like you may. Otherwise, you become a Schrodinger's cat. You know. Yeah, it's it's not. It's like nobody can make a judgment on this yet. Yeah, yeah, it's not looking. Uh, it's not looking good, dude. Um, mm. let me see here. Uh, controversial social media influencer has been extended by another 30 days by a court in uh, Bur- Bucharest, Bur- Bucharest. I don't know how to say that. Mm. Um, let me see. None of the four have been formally charged as of yet. The two women. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and two Romanian women. The two. So they got arrested with two Romanian women as well. Um, the two mm-hmm. Romanian w- women will be put under house arrest while the Tate brothers have been ordered held for <laughs> the, the third, thir- the third 30 day extension since their arrest. According to Romana Bola, spokesperson for Romania's anti-organized crime agency, uh, yeah. DICOT. Bola noted that if prosecutors can prove that Tate earned a profit from human trafficking, the assets Ooh. could be used to cover the expenses of the investigation and compensate the victims. According to previous Associated Press reporting, uh, it says the court cited the particular dangerousness of the defendants who had a history of identifying victims with an increased vulnerability in search of better life opportunities as basis for the decision to keep them in custody. Um, but yeah, they extended them again. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> they, they, in custody. So dude, at the so bottom, geez. I'm on Yahoo Entertainment, right? So I'm reading this article and at the bottom of the article, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I think it's like another article, but it's kind of hilarious because it looks like it's part of this article and it's an old bald dude with like a mug shot <laughs> and it looks like an old Andrew Tate. It's almost really? like, <laughs> so it's like the article, it's almost yeah. like the, they, they accidentally, the yeah, it's like they accidentally set it up to where like, <laughs> it looks like an old Andrew Tate in prison still <laughs> like mm. at the bottom of this article. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, he got, uh, he got, uh, he's been accused, man, of, uh, um, 
I think some more uh, accusations have surfaced too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You know, mm-hmm. and and I mean, this guy, this guy is just poisoning the the minds of uh, impressionable young men and, yeah. and boys all across the world. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm glad they're they're getting him out of there. They're getting him out. Um, I don't want to, you know, I I wouldn't want someone to be jailed or anything under false pretense. But it sounds like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it doesn't look good for them, man. Um, I know that they seized. I saw something else too that they seized assets, um, and those dudes were always trying to say that they had, I think, like you know, tens of millions of dollars in Bitcoin or something. And I think what they mm-hmm. seized amounted to like five hundred thousand in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't have that much. Really. Yeah, they seized all their like sports cars and stuff. And I think I, I heard that over half of them were. Um, not even Entered? were found to yeah not even be theirs really um, yeah these guys are fucking they were, they were pulling a real they were pulling a real um ty lopez situation huh yeah i dude i just how people can't see through this bullshit is um you know just absolutely beyond me man it, it's absolutely beyond me i think i think you're i think you're absolutely right when you said like impressionable you know young men you know because i feel like impressionable young impressionable young men are the ones who are most willing out of any human being in the world to defend a belief you know it's the same it's the same crowd that like you know it's the same crowd that at some point in time you would have been like it's not it's fake they were like it's not fake it's no way you know yeah they're they're really they're really wrestling they're they're really doing it you know it's the same people you know it's like you know, just adamantly fending something that is unarguably false, you know? Yeah. It, it's re- truth. Yeah. It's cognitive dissonance, man. I, yeah. I really can't. It, there's If there's one thing I really can't stand is this cognitive dissonance. Just, um, just, and just delusions, man. Um, and just n- total denial of, um, you know, uh, of of the evidence, right? Um, like I'm looking at something here, right? Uh, these are the um, R word accusations, <laughs> the assault <laughs> accusations, uh, from the past few years that have, I guess, recently come to light. Uh, in 2013, woman alleges Tate, uh, alleges that it- Tate. <laughs> Um, like the t- the tit. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I don't know how to say that. Uh, R-worded her in the UK. 2014, a mm. uh, woman alleges sexual assault in the UK. Uh, Twenty. Uh, that was 2014. 2015, two women allege assault by Tate in the UK. And then in March 2022, um, a woman accuses Tate of R-word. Uh, it's like, guys, this doesn't, this doesn't happen by accident. Right. Right. Um, you know, there are dudes out there, right. Uh, Let's play devil's advocate. Right. There are dudes out there who have been falsely accused of this sort of thing. And it's terrible. Um, no one gets falsely accused multiple times. (laughs) Your, Mm. your odds of being falsely accused are, I think, uh, you're more likely to get struck by lightning. Um, so you know, your odds of getting falsely accused multiple times are infinitely smaller. Right. Uh, so it's like, guys, Tate fans out there, you know, it's, 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 it's time to grow up. It's, it's one of those things, right? Where, you know, to bring back, um, Cosby, Cosby into this conversation. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like Cosby was like 64, you know, <laughs> It was 64 and he walked out of that one, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where there has to be something conclusive, you know? Like, I think the, I I think the number one thing to take away from this and the whole, and the whole like Cosby thing too, is just kind of being like, you know, at that point you have to and i think um chappelle addressed that too it's like what you know at one point this is like without a shadow of a doubt it happened you know when it's yeah. like that many that many people being like yeah this happened then it's like without a shadow of a doubt you know yeah but 
just that person to see any, you know, jail time, something has to come out of there clear and clean and being like, yeah, we can, we can pin this guy, you know. We can put him down on the mat and it's going to be one, two, three, you know, and the title is going to be won by Randy Orton. So, right. <laughs> Not yeah. <with> John Cena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. WWE references. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's go my... see now, see now, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I got used to that, man. I got used to that chant. Oh, yeah. Those were the days, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, I'm looking at this here, too. Um, lawyers, so there was a woman who accused him. Let me see here. There was a woman who accused him. Yeah, uh, a human tra- uh, one of the women making um, R-word and human trafficking claims against him. Uh, he threatened legal action against her. Lawyers for the woman in the U.S. say a cease and desist letter was sent by a U.S. law firm in December on behalf of Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan. Tristan, Tristan Tate. Tristan. The le- it's an unfortunate name and last name combination. Yeah. The letter threatened to sue the woman and her parents for $300 million if she did not retract wow, her statements. $300 million. A lawyer for the Tates said they were pursuing valid claims for defamation um which you know if they're pursuing defamation in that case it it is kind of like well would they really be that going that hard i I, I don't know i don't know how that works you know it's like what Mm -hmm. what is your (laughs) what would be if i'm if i'm his lawyer what is my best move right Mm -hmm. but who who knows man another thing too that i saw this so Tate, this guy really was out of control, man. Like, this guy thought he was a fucking mob boss or something. Yeah. <laughs> he did these things called cancellation bounties. Do you, do you know what that is? I have no idea what that is. I, I didn't either. I don't even know if it's really a thing, but that's what this says here. A source who was once a member of Hustlers University, which Hustlers was Andrew Tate's. University. So, dude, he had, side note, he had Hustlers University, and then he had yeah. the... The PhD program, the pimp and hose degree. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Like this guy, this guy is a that, fucking idiot. They should take idiot. that as proof against him. Yeah, they should yeah, take right? that as proof against him. I mean, dude, I mean, literally, literally. Just the fact that that was part of that is like, this is as much incrimination as you can possibly get, at least verbally. That, yeah, that's ridiculous. I mean, who who the hell signs up for this stuff? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, dude, if if I had a son who signed up for this shit, I'd be like, dude, you are out. You are out, man. You're a, you're, you're no <laughs> you're, son of mine. Get out. Get out. Yeah, get out. <laughs> get, out. get out. Yeah, uh, God. But it says here, a source who was once a member of Hustlers University says students were also offered cancellation bounties, which were placed on the heads of Tate's perceived enemies. In a message this source shared with Vice World News, a moderator using the screen name Luke appears to be instructing members to make videos condemning KSI, a British YouTuber, oh. boxer, rapper, and entrepreneur with 24 million followers and offering a reward for the most successful one. I mean, guy was like a, you know, the guy is just a wannabe supervillain, and, and these are the consequences, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's mobilizing people. It's like, dude, he's mobilizing mobs. He's trying to get other people canceled. Yeah, it's like, dude, you think you're fucking Dr. Doom? Screw get that the guy. Fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah. He thinks he's Megamind. Yeah. <laughs> it's Megamind. It's Megamind. It's bald. It's bald. It's bald ass. It's Dr. Doom bald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Victor, Victor Von Doom. I think he is bald. <laughs> He's bald, yeah. Victor Von Doom. Let me see. Victor with a K. Because, uh, no, he he's not bald head. He's not bald. No. Then he has. Then he thinks he's Mega Mind. Mega Mind's bald. Yeah, I think you're thinking. He thinks of, he's uh, Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're thinking of Lex Luthor. Mm. Yeah, Doctor Doom. I think Doctor Doom's uh one of the next like big bads in the um in the MCU, I believe. Because, like, cause like, I'm, like, really behind um, on these movies. I'm, like, really behind. Um, yeah. I think, the, I think the last one that I saw was... Uh, I can't even remember. What was the last thing that came out? Maybe the Spider-Man you, movie? You I think saw that the was Eternals, didn't you? 
I've seen the Eternals, yeah. And I saw Captain Marvel and I saw Spider Man uh, Far From Home. Yeah. And I also saw the 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 show. Um Moon Knight. Moon Knight, yeah, I saw yeah. Moon Knight. I think I, I think Knight. Moon Knight is as far as I have as I am right now. I've not seen the last Doctor Strange movie that I but I know that they tease the Fantastic Force in that, right? Um in Moon Knight. You saw that, right? No, um, the the did you see the, did you see the the Raimi? Um, oh yeah, yeah, Doctor no. Strange movie. Yeah, no, no, they don't even. Uh, yeah, uh, Reed Richards is in that movie, Mister Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. played by um, Jim from, from the, the Office. office. What the hell's his yeah. name? Yeah, whatever his yeah. name is, Jim from the yeah, Office. Whatever his name is, everyone yeah. knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> Krasinski, John Krasinski. John Krasinski. Yeah. Yeah. My dad actually met him. Um, hmm. My dad was an extra in the movie Leatherheads. I think you've told. George, I think I've been told about this. Yeah, George Clooney and, and John Krasinski, mm. I guess, was was on the set too, and um, mm. apparently talked to John Krasinski like for a while, just like. In the really? Movie, was he a nice movie. guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. So I think, and I think this is actually just hearsay um, that Doctor Doom is the next uh, villain. I, I believe so because uh, Collider just released an article like seven days ago. The MCU desperately needs Doctor Doom. Yeah. Uh, they desperately need something to add, like some, like some, like spice. Because I know, I don't know if you knew this, um, but I found this out today. There's been there's there has been like an Ant Man movie out for like a couple of weeks, I think. Now, yeah, I heard about. Yeah, this. I did. I, heard I, it's awful. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea there wasn't an Ant Man movie out. I'm like no idea whatsoever. I did not know. Nobody mentioned that, and I think they need to be building to something again. I think that's kind of what they're missing. And it looks like the movie has really bad reviews. I just looked it up. It has a 48 percent Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh man, it's yeah. finally uh, catching up to and <laughs> to Marvel critics. It's are like, catching you up know to them. What? People are getting. People are over this. Yeah. Yeah, they're over it, man. Like, they they really pee with thanos like thanos was it you know <laughs> with wait with who edward <laughs> with shrek, with shrek. <laughs> <laughs> it's back yeah. he's back it always comes out of nowhere doesn't it <laughs> yeah. um, we don't plan this they, i promise it, you know they, they don't plan this fucking shrek this fucking shrek segments of this fucking thanos segments and josh brolin and all these guys um <laughs> but they peaked with them. You know, they peaked with, with Purple Shrek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they peaked with them. Purple and Shrek. they have to find they have to find something else to build up to now. Like they do, man. Because people that, I think that's why those movies are so like um successful because they, they just you know in twenty twelve when Avengers, the first one came out, you know, and it ended with Purple Shrek being like, oh, the, the, the Infinity Stones, you know. <laughs> and then everybody knew it. It's like, okay, we're building up to something. There's like a narrative here. But the other movies now have all just kind of become their like weird own independent, like multi-universe thing. Like mm -hmm. every, every Marvel movie that has come out has been like a multi-universe thing. Every single one of them. And it's like, well... You know, this is not cool. Like, it, this is not impressive or like cool if they're all a multi-universe movie, the Spider-Man movie and the Doctor Strange movie, and now the Ant-Man movies about the quantum dimensions. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's like it's too much. You know, <laughs> and I think the Thor movie is probably the same thing because I think you know they did something where Thor is not Thor anymore, and it's like um, Natalie Portman's Thor or something like that. Yeah, and. Yeah. I you know so it's like I didn't bother with that one. Yeah, they, I didn't bother they, with that really, one either. They keep striking out, man, because Thor people hated the Thor movie too. Yeah, yeah. They're on, yeah. They're on a streak. They're on like a, a, a losing streak. streak of yeah. They're on a losing streak of people just kind of being like, yeah, I don't know about this one, Chief. You know, this, I think something has happened with those movies where they have ceased to be. I don't know. It's kind of like it's kind of like Marvel. It's like season like um seven of like How I Met Your Mother or something or like mm. you know you know what I'm trying to say with this or like season eight yeah. of The Simpsons or whatever. It's like they've reached this point where they're just kind of doing a lot of like 
meta stuff and like self parody stuff and like fourth wall breaking stuff and it's like you know you guys need to get back to stories and characters you know yeah. and like and like building to something you know other than just conceptual things you know yeah i i don't yeah and there's something weird that ha- it just it always happens with um long running things whether it's you know a movie universe like this or like you said the simpsons you know or tv shows you know whatever um where mm. it's like you can only go it's like you can only go so far with it and the show will always the show or the movie series or whatever it is will always have sort of a peak Mm. um you know like i was watching the new season uh the new episode of south park the other day and i'm like yeah this is you know uh they took down megan and harry uh um the the you know whatever the the royal couple Mm. um on the new south park um it was pretty funny. Oh really? Yeah, because yeah. they had that documentary on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So it so yeah. it was like basically the concept of the episode was they moved to South Park, right? Mm-hmm. Um and they they do this whole giant talk show tour and all they do is just pick it on the talk shows and they're just like, We want privacy, respect our privacy, right? And like the joke is like they're they want privacy and yet they keep putting themselves out there, right? Yeah. Uh, no, so- that that's like Go ahead. No, go ahead. That's the weird paradox with celebrity that I've yeah. kind of um, stumbled on. And one of like, you know, the, a big one for me of kind of just being like, well, this is like really hypocritical was with um, tennis athlete Naomi Osaka, um, who I used to be a, a fan of not much these days. But it, it was something like that with her where, you know, she at some point, I think it was like during the French Open in 2020 or 2021, she like pulled out of the of the Open and she pulled out of it like quoting like, you know, that like privacy and feeling like, you know, right. things were like invasive and like mental health. But at the same time, like during all that same stuff, she had like a humongous amount of campaigns, you know. Yeah. She had like a, a Netflix documentary that came out like the week after that happened and like all these other campaigns with like, you know chanel and nike and it's just like you know and it's the same thing where it's just like well you're saying one thing and you're doing another thing yeah you yeah. know <laughs> and that's just like really weird and hypocritical and it makes it feel like you know, you're just coming up with excuses you know yeah. or like you're just like saying things just to say them i don't you know what i'm saying oh no i totally get it well they and they tackled that in this episode like there so there's a uh, part part way into the episode because they move across from uh kyle they move right across from mm. Kyle. And uh, what happens is Kyle starts, you know, he gets fed up with them, right? Because they keep, every time he walks by their house to his house, um, they're always doing something, whether it's, they're, they're being, they're always being obnoxious, right? So they're always like, um, they're always making noise. They're partying to like all hours of the night. They're like calling all the attention to themselves. Yeah. They're f- flying in on private jets, all this, uh, all this kind of stuff. And, um, Kyle starts getting pissed off at them and telling them like, you know, listen, I can't sleep. Like you guys are making way too much fucking noise. And they're like, don't you respect, don't you know anything about privacy? Respect our privacy, blah, blah, blah. Huh. Right. So what Kyle starts doing <laughs> is he just starts ignoring them. Well, they get mm. upset when he starts ignoring them. <laughs> yeah. <'cause laughs> like, they, they, wanted him, <laughs> they wanted his attention. Yeah. There, there, there's mm. even a scene where like Kyle goes in his house and just ignores them. And he, and he starts sitting on his couch and I think he's like playing video games. Games. and mm. prince harry goes up to the window and unzips his pants and starts rubbing his balls on the window <laughs> to like try to get kyle's oh, attention <laughs> um but uh <laughs> i kind of yeah. forget oh where i was going with this was like the episode was pretty funny but mm. I'm, i'll tell you what man i was watching uh the other day like peak south park right um back in you know the 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 era of episodes um, such as, you know, the Warcraft episode, right? Yeah. The um, yeah. Butters pimping episode. <laughs> you know, the, there, there's yeah. so many. It's a, you can't even count them. The, that the, was the, the, that was the time. Oh yeah, yeah the no, Wheel that was of the Fortune time episode. Yeah. yeah, like all those episodes, right? That was peak South Park, and it's like, man, mm. 
something happens in the mm. creative process. Because you and I have mm. talked about South Park where we're like, the show exists with the world. So that's why it's able to go on for so long. But mm. despite that, it's almost like it's still not hitting that the, that peak era. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. It's like, what, what, what happens with these? Yeah. But something happens. Something happens, yeah. you know, where it's like, the same thing happened with like Rick and Morty, you know, um, where and that show will never be the same again, you know. No. Like, I think uh, to be honest, I think they should just like cancel that show. They should they should just let that show be, you know. Yeah. It's like how can you move on with that show? But that's a different thing. Um, but something happens where it's like you know, at some point during the creative process of something, there's like a synergy yeah. where all of the right people are in the room. You know, like with The Simpsons, like that, you know, those seasons, like probably, I think it's like probably like seasons like three, four, five, and six or something. The like show was like through, at its peak. Yeah. It's like season one through 10, I think, are generally regarded as yeah. peak. The yeah. 90s, basically. But, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, the, the, and, and I, I think I'm saying like, uh, I think it's, I think the idea really is like, I think like one through seven or like one through eight, because at, at some point. On the seventh or eighth season, I think it's like when Conan left, and like, you know, um, a lot of the core people like left. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that's what happens. Like, there's a point in time with every show where all of the right people who really created the show and like really defined, you know, its voice are all there. Yeah. They all like are working at their peak creative performances. Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, and they all peak and the show peaks with them, you know, yeah. and because everybody's so great at the same time, everybody gets like their opportunities, you know, yeah. for Rick and Morty, it was like season two, I think it's like when that happened yeah. where, you know, they did season one and two, which are like, you know, both of those seasons, 10 out of 10, every episode. Yeah. But I remember Harriman and, and, and Justin Roiland talking about how because they had not been renewed for a third season a lot of their staff got um poached you know they got they got poked out of the out of the the, the team yeah you know people have people have to keep moving on everybody has to work everybody has to eat so a lot of their staff and a lot of their writers a lot of people just like left because they got jobs with like other shows disney whatever you know yeah because a lot of these other shows they want talent and they'll offer they'll always offer like Whatever writer wrote whatever episode that was like really great, you know, like oh we'll offer you this money and come over here, you know. They got all their stuff taken out, you know. For the Simpsons, like Conan went and, and had his show and like everybody left, you know. Yeah, I think it's probably something along those lines with South Park too, where it's like, you know, even though like um, what is it, uh, Parker and who else? Um, oh oh, South Park, Trey Parker and Matt yeah. Stone. Parker, yeah, even though Trey Parker and Matt Stone, I had, I had like Parker, Trey, and, and Stone, Matt Stone, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, it, you know, even though those guys are still in the show, I think there was probably a time in which, like, there was the people that were working on the show were all great, and everybody probably loved working at the show, and they were making the best product possible. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, and there's something to that, you know. I think there's, like, something to that. Because, uh, you know, even with Marvel, like, all of the people who were acting in there before, before they're not there anymore, you know, like right. Downey's not in those movies anymore. I think Chris Hemsworth's like, I think that was like the last Thor movie for him, you know, Chris Evans, you know, um, is not in those movies anymore. A lot of those characters either died or got old or the actors didn't want to keep doing that shit anymore. Like, I think that maybe has something to do with those movies where it's like a lot of the original blood and like heart of those movies is gone you know mm. like to me Downey was like really the heart of those movies like he was the heart of those movies it was him and 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 captain america it was him and chris evans you know mm -hmm. the fact that they're not on those movies anymore i think it's like a big deal because it's like well there's no like it doesn't feel like there's like a central cohesive character that's like driving everything anymore mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying they and I don't believe they have casted or have a franchise that has that core character in it. Yeah, I I can yeah. agree with that. Yeah, because like like both Downey and, and Evans with Captain America and with you know Iron Man, both felt like they were both like 
leaders and mature and you could look up to them and you could you, you know what i'm saying and, well, I now, think that was and now they're all goofies basically exactly and i think that was the crux of like the civil war movie that it's like oh you have both you have two characters that you respect you know you can respect iron man and you can respect captain america and it's like which side do you agree on you know um i think well, the screen uh, like you said that's what we've lost everything's goofy now or like cartoony and and they I all have the a woman. Most... They all have like a female sidekick too. That like they're not supposed yeah. to main mansplain to. And yeah, like, <laughs> who tells them how to actually do things yeah. and gets yeah. shit done and makes them look stupid, right? Like Ant Man yeah. has the exactly. wasp, right? Yeah. Thor has Natalie Portman. Uh, yeah. Black Panther had that uh, in in his. You know, his I haven't movie. seen the new Black Panther movie. Um, well, in the first one, I haven't seen the new one. Yeah, yeah, but I, I know what you're yeah. I'm tracking. Um, yeah, but 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 that's which, the thing. Which, you know, Iron Man and Captain America never had that. They didn't have that no. female sidekick that tried to make no. them like look like an oaf the entire movie. Right. right. <laughs> it's just like fucking that. That's another no. trope that we gotta no. stop, man. It's like yeah. no, no. You're it's making, absolutely right, and it's but, true. because it's that true, kind of right. stuff. Yeah. That kind of stuff empowers the Tate fans they're because they're yeah, like see it look they hate yeah. men there's a war on masculinity oh, and it, yeah. it like it fires them up right yeah um they got it no and you're right and, and that was a great thing about those characters in in that era of those movies where like they weren't trying to disrespect the characters or make them seem goofy or deconstruct them they were just right. kind of like let's try to tell stories you know if, if you're telling like a human story you're not disconstructing anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. if you're telling like a human story about a human being, you're not looking at that human being as like a character with tropes that we can then like play with. It's like, oh, Thor is supposed to be, you know, like masculine and strong. So let's make him not strong and not masculine. Let's make him a goofy, you know, dude right. that doesn't do anything. So it's like, uh, and those are doing that is just like a vehicle for like meta narratives, and and I think that's what people are kind of bored with right now. And I believe that you know what people are kind of craving are just stories, you know, just straightforward, just like give me a story, give me a character, you know, mm -hmm. give me an arc, you know, give me some, you know, just give people like stories, man. I agree with that, and and it's funny because I had this thought the other day. So I have been watching the new season of the show you mm. uh, that just came out on Netflix. Um, no, I never got. Yeah. You never got into show. that. Yeah. How much of that mm. show did you see? You saw the first episode? No, I got, I saw like most of the first season. Oh really? Most of the first season? Yeah. Most oh, shit. Of I didn't realize that. So I'm a big fan of the show. You, I actually really enjoy that show. I think it's a great mm. show. Um, mm. I think it's, you know, it, it has a lot of, it's very Dexter like, um, you know, I think Dexter was still probably a little bit better. Dexter is a classic. Uh, but I really do think that um, I think you is a great show, particularly season three was fantastic. Season three was great. Um, I'm not all the way through the new season yet. And they're mm -hmm. actually dropping the, the second half of the new season um, in a few weeks. So they're they're kind of mm -hmm. like they spliced it up. Um, I think I think the show you is fantastic. Um, Again, particularly season three, very, I want to say very Hitchcock type storytelling, um, great use of suspense, just really solid, uh, just good, good, like thriller stuff. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, and I think the, the characters are excellently written. Um, mm. I think it's a great show. And um, I'm always looking forward to, you know, the new seasons. I'm enjoying the new season so far. However, there is somewhat of a meta narrative in it. Mm -hmm. And the new season is sort of, they, they do a good job of keeping that show fresh too. Right. So like season one is, you know, basically the premise of the show, right. Which is that this main character, Joe is, you know, he was abused as a child or whatever. And now in his adulthood, he craves like honest, real connection. And because mm -hmm. of that, it, it's gone too far. And he's sort of this creep, right? It, not sort of, he's a huge, massive creep um, mm -hmm. who stalks and like builds. What I find really interesting about Joe is that he builds fantasies 
around mm. these women that he stalks, right? They become, he projects onto them like who he wants them to be. And you actually mm. see the consequences of that in season three because basically in season three, what happens, they keep it really fresh, right? Because season one, he's doing that. Season two is sort of the, a retread of season one, but just with a different woman and a few different plot elements. Then what mm. they do is they have the same woman in season three they sort of get their happily ever after, right? But the woman ends up being fucking crazier than he is, right? Mm. So now he's suffering the consequences of, I built this fantasy, and now that I'm seeing the fantasy crumble, now um, I have to deal with what this woman actually is, which is a fucking psychopath, right? Mm. A murderous psychopath. And these are spoilers for you, so we can timestamp those. But, the spoilers um, for me or spoilers for you? you right, right. So, <laughs> so what happens in four, again, the creators are doing a really good job of keeping the show fresh, right? Because in, in, in different hands, it could have been a retread each season of the same shit, but it's just a, a new girl that he's obsessing over, and that would have been terrible, right? So they're doing a good job of keeping the show fresh. Season four, what's happening is now Joe is the one getting stalked by like an unknown murderer, right? Mm -hmm. So now what the show is doing is it's basically being like, okay, so now the shoe's on the other foot, right? The hunters become And that hunted. is very much like a meta narrative like situation. Well, so it's not even that that's meta. What's meta is because I don't know, you probably remember from season one that Joe is like a huge book nerd. So what is happening is he's trying to figure out who this killer is in this group of like socialites that he's now a part of. And he starts um, studying like mystery novels, murder mysteries. And he starts talking in terms of like murder mystery, you know, and in terms of like, oh, the, you know, the first suspect is always the second victim and blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's just like. Ah, fuck. You know, they, they're they getting like kind of Deadpoolish with it in that mm. meta way. And I just felt it just takes you out of it. You know, mm. like the, this, the, the meta shit these days, I think, just sucks people out of what they're watching. Right. Mm. I, I, I really do. Um, I think people I think we really got to slow down on it. Yeah, because there's so I we get it. We understand that there's so much content. Right. There's so much content. People are consuming like hundreds of hours of story weekly, mm. right? Well, not mm. hundreds, but like, you know, tens of <laughs> hours of story yeah. weekly, right? Yeah. Uh, let's say, you know, we could we could reasonably say 10 hours at least of story yeah. on the low end of story a week, right? Because yeah. people who watch, you know, binge watch television shows, watch a couple movies in a week, boom, you're at mm. 10, 20, maybe 30 hours of story. Yeah. So it it's like, yeah, we know all these tropes. We understand that you know that we know all these tropes, right? Mm. But mm. they're going about dealing with that the wrong way with the meta stuff, I think. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, because it's like, you know, it's we're living in the post Spider Man Raimi world. Of, yeah. Of everything. You know, everything is We've, every everything is you've already seen the 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 what is it um origin story you've yeah. already seen the origin story so we're skipping past that you know like yeah, yeah everything is just assuming that the audience knows certain things because of you know where we exist in the current you know narrative of storytelling you know this postmodern like you know meta bullshit that we keep dealing with um, yeah but I don't know man I think I think we're all kind of getting to the point where we're all kind of a little bit, you know, over it. At least I know that I am. Yeah. For me, you know, for me, storytelling has been this way for a while. You know? Yeah. Like, if you've been paying attention, storytelling has been operating in, like, a, you know, post-meta, like, post-modern, like, meta narrative for a while. I'm, like, really over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm really over it, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, I am too. Because the thing yeah. is, when I was watching the new season of You, it, it felt like... So there, there was even a moment, right, where Joe, he's trying to, he, he realizes that there's a murderer, right? Mm. Someone showed up dead and the murderer is like texting him from a private number. And he's like, 
he says in his inner monologue, he even says, he's like, oh no, a murder mystery, the lowest form of fiction, right? And it, it just gives you this <laughs> feeling, <laughs> it just, it gives you this feeling that, and, and look, it doesn't put a massive damper on the show. I can get past it. Mm. Like, you know, I'm still enjoying the show that it's still, it's still well written. It's still super mm. engaging. It's still super suspenseful. It's got solid character work. Um, it's still the show that I enjoy, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, it doesn't by no means ruins it, but when he said that, I got this feeling that it was sort of the creators doing the equivalent of an insecure person self-deprecating, right? Yeah, Before yeah. someone else can, yeah. where it's like yeah, exactly yeah, we're yeah, yeah. embarrassed and ashamed to be doing a yeah. murder mystery. And, I, and I've, and I've like, talked no, to you about how be, I feel about that shit too. Yeah, and and it's like it, it, to just cap this off, cap this point off real quick. Like it's it's like, man, if you want to do a murder mystery, do a murder mystery. Just do it well, yeah. and they're doing it yeah. well right now. I have no fucking idea who that killer is, dude. So far, I don't know. Yeah. You know, may, I I haven't gotten to the end of this to the mid season finale, which is how how far you can go before they release the next mm-hmm. one. So so I don't know if they've revealed it yet. Uh, where I'm mm. at, but I have no fucking clue. Like I have guesses, you know, and, and yeah. I know who are like maybe the red herrings, right? So, okay, this person looks like they are, so they probably aren't. Yeah. So it's like, they're doing it well. So it's like, look, if you want to do a murder mystery, fucking go for it. Don't apologize mm. to the audience by doing this meta stuff. Mm. And, and that's, you know, I remember you and I had a conversation about this with like Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool like first came out, you know. Right, right. Um, which which I think it was like a big that movie was like a big front runner, in, in just kind of establishing what was to come. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's oh, like yeah. what was coming. It's like all these fucking meta movies are coming. All these fourth walls, or these self references. All this shit's coming, you know. Um, but I remember then talking to you about it and just telling you like, man. I was like, that movie's as shitty as the movies that it's making fun of, you know? But it's just, like, covering itself on a blanket of, like, you know, away, like self-awareness, you know? So the self-awareness doesn't excuse it, you know? Like, like you said, like, trying to get ahead of people with a criticism doesn't excuse the criticism. It just means that you're acknowledging, you know, right. there will be criticism, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. silly, man. Yeah. It, um... And the thing is, too, you can deconstruct genre um, without doing the meta stuff. A great example is um, so Tarantino is a good example. Um, a really mm-hmm. good example, too, it, you know, and Tarantino goes a little meta in his films, but it's always really clever when he does it. Um, I can't think of a very super specific example right now, but I think another great example is um, sort of a Tarantino almost disciple i want to say sort of a modernish tarantino which is s craig zoller uh, um, i knew i knew you were going i know you were going with that yeah yeah um he yeah. does a great job of deconstructing genre uh, yeah. which basically you know for those listening like deconstructing genre all that means is basically hey we're going to take this genre and unapologetically use the tropes mm. in this genre and make them the sort of you know, one of the uh, main attractions almost of the movie, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, um, you know, like I am turning on Brawl in Cell Block 99 specifically because of these tropes, right? Like that's deconstructing mm-hmm. genre. Um, you can do that without doing <laughs> the, the Deadpool stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, yeah. 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 Um, so let me think here. Let's get into, let me go into a little movie news here. Um, I had like, for some reason yesterday, I, I thought the Oscars were yesterday. Like I woke up today and there was like, people were sharing like memes about some kind of like award show. Yeah. 
like, I don't know if you know about this. There was like this like really awkward award show where this lady was like performing like a song and dance. And in the song and dance, she was like incorporating, just like saying nice things about the, the nominees. Mm-hmm. And people were sharing it just like as a goofy thing. And I was like, were the Oscars yesterday? I said, do the Oscars matter so little that they were yesterday? And I did not know that this happened. They were not yesterday. Um, apparently, they're like... <laughs> Like in a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I went to see what was trending in the news and the Oscars were in trending. And I was like, oh, the Oscars don't matter, you know. Because that, <laughs> that video that I saw literally looked like it was the Oscars. And because I didn't see it trending, I was like, people don't care about this shit anymore. Because <laughs> all these award shows just kind of happen in the background these days. You know, like the Grammys happened um, like a week and a half ago. And I don't, I, don't, I have no idea who won anything, you know. Like... Only the only thing I know about it is that people were like upset about like Sam Smith's performance because it was like full of like you know devil imagery and people got really like up in arms about it. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was like, oh, did the awards get given out? What happened? You know, no, nothing's been given out apparently. <laughs> yeah, I I see, dude. There's there's a lot of um stuff uh, that I've seen which I I need to unfriend some people on Facebook. <laughs> um, but yeah, th- just stuff, you know, locals, of course, uh, down, down in the, in the Bible belt, um, mm-hmm. just posting stuff about, you know, oh my gosh, like Satan is active in our world with these, you know, images and, uh, you know, in the Rihanna's performance too, and, and Sam Smith's performance and, and Satan is meddling in our world sure and the night king is coming back to conquer westeros yeah. like you know yeah. and thanos <laughs> is coming back for the infinity stones but guys get yeah. a grip jesus christ yeah. satan get get a grip on reality man um snap back to reality whoop the goat's crowd god like oh the rapture is happening soon okay yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sam Smith. Sam Smith is one of the one of the three horsemen of the apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Sure. Yeah. It also says, I believe, in um one of the books of the Bible that uh I think either Rome or Babylon will be in power when the rapture happens. Um. So yeah, yeah. you're about two we're far to away 3, from 000. we're far away from that. Yeah, you're two thousand years <laughs> late on that one, guys. Yeah. Um. Speaking of which, another mm. exorcism movie is coming out. Really? <laughs> we talked Pope about this last week. With Russell Crowe. It's called The Pope's Exorcist. Yeah. Um, Russell Crowe will do anything these days. He, he anything. Has, he, dude, is there an actor that has made worse uh, casting choices in the past few years? Yeah. Like, I, I don't so, think but- so. I think Russell Crowe. I think a lot of. I I think with him. I think he went into like debt. And I also think he had like some health issues. And I also believe that the thing with him is that he garnered like a really bad reputation for being kind of like an asshole or something like that. Oh, like, dude. I don't know if you know this. There is like a South Park episode <laughs> where they make like a caricature out of him, where the whole episode is like about how Russell Crowe. Goes to places and fights people. You know, <laughs> that's what the whole thing is about. It, and he has like a boat, like uh, you know. I think he's Australian. So the the character in the show has like an Australian accent, and he has like this little boat that follows him everywhere. And the boat, the boat also like it's like an animated character, and he just fights people and gets into brawls. And I believe that's actually stuff that he used to do. Like if you go into his Wikipedia, you'll see him. Yeah. And if you Google like Russell Crowe. Police, you will see pictures of the, of the police like arresting him. Police, oh, he's like God. wearing like he's like wearing like um sunglasses. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he looks it's, like uh, he looks like Sabretooth kind of in these photos, like uh, Wolverine's brother. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There he's wearing the sunglasses. Yeah, there he is. There's Russell Crowe. Yeah, those th- these images were like infamous at the time. My God! When this happened, this was like infamous because apparently, like that's like a thing. I think it's like died down, but that used to be a thing in New York. It, they would call it like the perp walk or something like that, where they would just walk you out. 
you know, they would like just walk you out in public, you know, with the handcuffs. Yeah. That was like a public like shaming thing. I don't think they do that anymore because I think they got sued. But I think this is like one of the most high profile like perp walks. <laughs> it's just Russell Crowe. <laughs> but off of this, you know, South Park started making jokes about him and him beating up people and stuff. No, it says no. Russell Crowe arrested for assault of a hotel clerk. He was just beating people up, man. Jesus. Yeah. My goodness. Um yeah, so so I actually haven't even watched the trailer for this uh exorcism thing, but apparently it's like based on um true <laughs> real life claims, we'll say. Sure, um sure. Yeah, exactly. Um uh, it's based portrayal of a real life figure Father Gabriel Amorth, a priest who acted as a chief exorcist of the Vatican, who performed more than 100,000 exorcisms. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm. Yep. Sounds legit. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, th- I saw I saw the headline. Um, I'm like, who, who gives a shit, honestly? Yeah. Um, another exorcism movie. They're, they're, it's yeah. so weird. Um, they're so popular in the U.S., yeah, um, yeah, but they know that Christians, uh, I guess, will go see him or, or something. Yeah. Um, there's just like a big, there's like a really big market for exorcism movies. Well, I want to so, see them. Well, so everybody has this biblical fear, you know. They all want to be like, oh man, I want to see them get exorcised. I want right. to hear, I want to hear them do a a, a voice. A, you know, I want to hear them overlay three voices. <laughs> but it yeah. sounds like it's the devil because it's like I, I, I will, we will, we, you know, like you know yeah. what I'm talking about when they do that. They oh, yeah, it's yeah. like three it's like people three talking voices. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. we're just like oh, I've come to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and not the apocalypse, you know. Whatever. Yeah, but, but it's always like really extreme too. It's always like <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's yeah. always like somebody speaking <laughs> with their throat, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's always like really like unsettling. They do they, those voices are unsettling. You gotta give it to them. <laughs> so what what I find that's really that's the appeal, man. That's what people go with their phone. Yeah, what I find really dumb about the ex- uh, actual, you know, portrayals of exorcisms too is like uh I feel like if demons were real, so you know, they're supposed to be fallen angels, right? Wouldn't they be a lot I feel like they would be a lot more um sophisticated than that. Yeah, they're just, you know, like, like just a, screaming things. Yeah, like if I were a demon, right, and I went to possess somebody, I, like wouldn't you – so first of all, right, like if I go to possess – if if I tried to possess you, right, Edward, and mm-hmm. I'm a demon, right, I go to possess you, I would first learn your mannerisms and everything. Like wouldn't you want to possess someone without people knowing that you're possessing them? Yeah, no, you would, like, would want to be a skin crawler. You would, you would want to be like the guy from that movie Starstruck. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Starstruck. The guy from the guy from Sunny with a chance of me. Sunny with a chance. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What's his oh, name? Yeah, What's his Disney name? Disney Channel guy. <laughs> yeah, the Disney Channel guy. That guy's a skin crawler. Why? Why do, do people say that? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Starstruck movie. <laughs> Sterling Knight. Oh God! Yeah. yeah, he looks like a nightmare. What the <laughs> hell? Why do people say that about him? Uh, is it because of what I just said? <laughs> yeah. Am I an asshole? <laughs> oh jeez. This is a, oh jeez. Wait, Sterling. What is this? Sterling Knight skin Skinwalker. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah Skinwalker. People, it out of fails. Oh yeah, because people believe yeah. in that. Yeah, people yeah. people believe in Skinwalkers and shit too. Um, yeah. So that guy, like, that, not so much now because he's like filled up. Like he's like a little bit like you know he's got meat on him. Uh, before when he was just like really like just like skin and bones oh he looked god. like a skin walker oh my god yeah he, dude he looks he looks really creepy <laughs> actually man yeah. those yeah. eyes i i don't know yeah. i never noticed it when i was a kid but these photos yeah. wow yeah he looks scary dude he looks like a scarecrow yeah. um in these older pictures yeah, yeah no you're right though, he has, a post I remember seeing a post along the lines of like the fact that these they try to make this skin crawler <laughs> into like <laughs> oh my God. into like into like some kind of like heartthrob or something. Oh Jesus. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. So 
<laughs> that guy's possessed by by the wish the wish uh what's what the fuck is the name of the movie <laughs> wish <Master. laughs> God. The wish master. <laughs> <laughs> you need to make three wishes, Edward. Oh God! Wait, I'm gonna send. Uh, wait, let me see if I can send you this photo. Oh yeah, dude. Okay, I'm about to send this in in, in general. Go look at this. <laughs> oh jeez, Jesus Christ! I'm afraid to go look in there because I think I might leave the podcast. No, go look. Go look. General. <laughs> what if I leave the channel? <laughs> no, you're it's not. Just, you're not. If you just saying, general looks like you're text in a- channels. Okay, let me see. Oh, text channel. Okay. One. Okay, there it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a picture I was looking at. <laughs> oh God. That's a picture I was looking at. I'm gonna remove that from my photos. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Delete message. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I, I just want, whenever I go here, I just I want to see the Virgin Stuart Little and the Shad R- Remy. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That's what I'm here. I'm sorry, that's what I go to the chat for. But yeah, so so anyway, if mm. I'm a if I'm a demon, right, like. I would want to, I would, so this is what I would do, right? I want to do some damage, right? You're my mark, Edward. I want to possess you, right? So I'd learn mm-hmm. all your mannerisms and everything, right? Um, Let's, you know, I, I would, I would perfect all of your mannerisms. Then I go possess you, right? And I don't know if that's, you know, what, what, what's all the screaming and writhing and all that? Is that just during the act of the possession when the demon's trying to take over? Is that why that's happening? Um, okay. So that happens, right? I could chalk that up to like a nervous breakdown, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm in, now I'm in you, right? And I'm you. Well, I would just start going around and you could really cause some damage if you, if you're like possessing somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you know, and you're keeping, (laughs) you're keeping your cool and not going, you know, bitch, Fuck shit, cunt! Like every five seconds. Well, that that's like where it's the, interesting. Like the girl in Exorcist, right? Oh, like th- this but, just doesn't make any sense, you know. But that's where it's interesting to to you know. Where it's interesting, you know, like I think there's a movie. Uh, I forget the name of it. You probably know what I'm talking about. But it's like the possession of Emily Rose or something like that. Yeah, um, I, I haven't seen that I, yet. Yeah, where I feel like it's more interesting. I think that's what this movie does. I I don't know. I've seen parts of it. But I feel like it's more interesting to actually examine human being who just like committed a crime or did certain things or they have like no recollection of it or something like that as being like, whoa, let's examine this as like a case of some kind of demonic possession, you know, mm. that makes that makes more sense, like you said, of of being like, oh, you know, of like you, like you yourself could be like, you know, you could commit a crime and then you'd be like, I don't know what happened. You know, I, I was possessed. I have no recollection. You know, and somebody like me would vouch for you and be like, yeah, you know, there's, you know, like what happened? You know, he must have been possessed, you know. Right. right. But like that's more interesting than the opposite, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Trying and to explain the... something unexplained, you know, as like some <laughs> kind of demonic possession thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. so and the thing is, I mean, the real life case of Emily Rose, I mean, they 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 like that girl died. I mean, they starved. I think they starved that poor girl or something because they thought she was mm. possessed by the devil. Mm. You know, I mean, this is. um, You know, th- these beliefs uh, do uh, it was her real name wasn't even Emily Rose. It was Annalise uh, Annalise Michael Annalise Michelle. Mm. Mm. But um. Yeah, I mean, I, I I believe that they, uh, yes, so she died in her home. The autopsy report stated the cause of death as malnutrition and dehydration resulting from almost a year in a state of near starvation while the rites of wow. exorcism were performed. I mean, guys. Oh, like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, this is fucking ridiculous. This poor girl that's probably absolutely had. absolutely ridiculous. But, but that's the thing. Like, poor, making a movie about girl that is had like, fascinating. Like, yeah, I mean, this poor girl had psychosis. I mean, she was yeah. prescribed antipsychotic drugs. You know, it, it, it's awful, man. And, and you're trying to like, st- you're trying to starve a demon out. And no, oh, the the know, family is completely at fault for that. Yeah, it, it's aw- that's ridiculous. awful, man. It's ridiculous. The ignorance gets you. Yeah, it, yeah. It it just um, I don't know, man. I I, I don't. <sighs> That's don't make no sense. No, it, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, Chief Keep no. song, shit, don't make no yeah, sense. No. Well, that's pretty ridiculous. Man. But yeah, I, yeah, that that that's the thing though. 
Um, I, I really do think if demons were real, I don't think they'd, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm a being that's older than time, I'm, I'm going to mm. be talking like in an upper class accent. Like it's going to be talking like pinhead in Hellraiser. Yeah. It's going to be dude, refined like... <laughs> and, and, and eloquent. Yeah. It's not going to be like, <laughs> uh, and, and, and we're getting, we're getting into that like, with like a wish million master, year which... old being <laughs> yeah, yeah like with the wish master that was my impression of him too where i was like oh this guy's really finely spoken you know <laughs> yeah he, he's exactly. got some pizzazz on him yeah yeah it's just so stupid man yeah but um <clears throat> yeah uh the, the movie cocaine bear came out uh this week have you heard I about, heard this about movie? that yeah i heard about that movie i heard about that <laughs> it looks crazy Looking it man. up <laughs> It's based on real events, too. A drug smuggler threw a duffel bag of cocaine out of a plane, and then the bear ate it. <laughs> Ray Liotta's in this movie. Ray Liotta passed away. I guess this was, this was probably like the last thing he did or something. Yeah. This uh, this movie looks fun, man. Um, yeah. Th- this killer could... action. Yeah, this it's is got def- decent, It's got decent reviews on it. Elizabeth Banks directed this. Oh, did she? Oh, fascinating. Yes, yeah, she did. Elizabeth Banks directed this. Wait, Elizabeth Banks. Do I have the right person here? Yeah, the actress. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Spider-Man. Okay, yeah. yeah. F- huh. From That's Hunger Games. Yeah. That's crazy, man. But yeah, yeah I, I, I would, I, I definitely want to, I definitely want to see that. I don't know if it's yeah. worth going to the theater, but. Uh, that might be one of those movies that is like worth just like renting <laughs> and yeah. popping off some like beers and being like, oh, let's fucking watch like, cocaine there. Oh, yeah. Should have fun with this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of. Uh, oh, uh, they had some first Creed three reactions. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, one that he one that he directed. Um, what's his name? Uh, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Uh, he directed that movie. Yeah, okay. the, the critics, I guess, who got an early screening uh, called it a knockout and a great directorial debut for uh, Michael B. Jordan. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That guy seems competent. That that guy seems like the kind of guy that, that you know, that you could... That seems like the kind of guy that could can do stuff like that. Just like, he kind of, mm-hmm. you know, he kind of strikes me as like a Ben Affleck type. Yeah. Of just being like, oh yeah, he can direct. Yeah, that's fine. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he makes he can make some good movies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because there, there's actors that kind of gave that impression, like Downey. You know, um, like Robert Downey Jr. He directed a movie, and that was like his first and last. <laughs> it didn't work out. I think he realized like, oh, this is not for me. But he kind of he also kind of gives that sense of being like, oh, that guy could be a good director. His dad was, you know, mm-hmm. but. I guess he understood that maybe it wasn't for him. Yeah. 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 Um, Venom mm. three is in pre production. Uh, mm, of course. Yeah. I think we talked about this because I think we talked about um we talked about something. Something along the lines no, of we like talked X about... character. Andrew Garfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we talked about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, shit. I could you know, I could pretty much care less. I didn't even see the second one. No, neither did I. Yeah, uh, I really liked Carnage when I was a kid, but I, I did too. I'm I'm willing to like look up like highlights from this movie, but not see the movie itself. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. what's up with the whole thing of uh, every Venom villain is just a bad Venom too? I mean, wh- wh- who like in Venom three? I mean, who's going to be the antagonist? Is it going to be another symbiote? There's no way. There's yeah. no way they could do that. But I wouldn't be yeah. surprised either, right? Like with how unoriginal. Yeah. Sony's been with these movies. That Cause, cause, that they, yeah, no, because you're right. Because that, that was the thing for the first one. The first movie, it was just a bad Venom. And the second movie, it's just Carnage, which is also a bad symbiote. It's like, what, what's going on? You know, like, give the guy something, you know. That's ridiculous. <clears throat> for Venom himself, is just supposed to be a villain anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I, feel, I, feel, I feel bad for Tom Hardy, because I feel like that's the only shit he's been doing lately. He's like such a good actor, you know. He used to be the guy that was always in the most fascinating movies for like a handful of years, and now he's just Venom. Yeah, 
Oh, he's just collecting checks. It's like, I don't give a fuck about this shit anymore. I just need to get paid. Yeah. To buy a uh, yacht. Yeah, it, it's weird. Um, it, it, it really sucks when you see actors just kind of go down a certain route. I mean, my my favorite actor for a while, um, at least like, you know, active, was Michael Fassbender. He has not yeah. been on anything. Yeah. He's been on anything. Like, if I go on his IMDb, it's like just the X-Men movies. Whenever they put an X-Men movie out, they like take him out of wherever he is and he does Magneto and then he goes back to wherever the fuck he was. Yeah. 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 It's, that it's... guy's a talent, man. Like, that guy's fantastic. Oh, Looking yeah. It up right now, it's like, what is going on with Michael Fassbender? Yeah, absolutely. I, I rewatched he the... He needs to stop going on benders. <laughs> he needs to start acting. Fast bender. Yeah, he's a fast bender. <laughs> Bend over like, dude, quickly. <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this man's IMDb. You know. This is what he's done since 27, no, since 2016, since he did the Steve Jobs movie. He did X-Men Apocalypse. He did Assassin's Creed. He did Alien Covenant Prologue. Alien Covenant Meet Walter. Alien Covenant Prologue The Crossing. Alien Covenant. Alien Covenant Phobos. Alien Covenant Advent. Those were all 20, that's all from 2016 to 2017. That's all he did. In 2017, he did the movie The Snowman that got critically destroyed. I think it has like a 10% Rotten Tomatoes. All those Alien and Covenant it, things you named, are those just like uh, featurettes or something? Those are shorts, featurettes, and like a uh, video game, I guess, like voiceover. Oh, okay. So literally, literally, he did Assassin's Creed in 2016, right? He did that and he did X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah. In 2017, he only did the alien stuff that's all he did in 2017 the alien movies and the snowman they got critically just destroyed and then in 2019 he didn't do any movies in 2018 in 2019 he did x-men dark phoenix i think that's like the last like x-men movie oh god that's it that's it yeah those x-men movies really shit the bed too yeah he yeah he he's what the hell is he doing? I mean, he was but, in. But that's uh, what, he was in. That's what I'm talking about, he had dude. Like great like, roles before. All no, that. like that guy is like one of my favorite actors, like all time. You know, I love that Steve Jobs movie. Like, it's like he did the Steve Jobs movie and he got nominated for like best leading actor, and then everything out from everything from then was just downhill. Yeah, everything from then was just Alien movies, X Men movies. That's it. And then a fucking shitty ass Assassin's Creed movie. But, you know, like he was in Steve Jobs. He wasn't that Macbeth movie. He was in a great, you know, Western called Slow West. And Glorious Bastards. Frank. He was in Inglorious Bastards. He was in a Slave. He was just a slave, you know, where he was nominated for that performance too, you know. He was in Prometheus. He was in Shame. You know, he was in, you know, he was just, he was just it, you know. Yeah. He was like in every Steve McQueen movie, you know, Steve McQueen <laughs> also being one of my favorite directors. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what happened to that guy. Like, I don't know what happened, man. It's been years. It's like either he just got addicted to getting paid or or maybe they just don't – maybe actors just don't know what they're signing up for too. Um, like when mm -hmm. they start doing these big franchises like Prometheus um, or Assassin's Creed or you know, <laughs> uh, X-Men, you know. Who knows? Who knows? Like I'm gonna don't... tell you what it, I'm gonna tell you what he's been doing. <laughs> a Steve Jobs movie was fantastic too. Yeah, he was. It says Fassbender began competing in auto racing in 2017. What? With the Ferrari Challenge, he currently races in the European Le Mans series, driving for Proton competition. So basically, he just switched careers. <laughs> He switched he's, careers. It's like I'm done acting. <laughs> he's done, dude. He's switched careers. He's like fucking auto racer guy. <laughs> what in the fuck? There's a section in his Wikipedia that goes from acting, you know, that ends in 2019 film Dark Phoenix. He went from that, you know, and then the next thing is auto race. <laughs> <laughs> dude, what the fuck, man? 
<laughs> he said, yeah, even so before cool. I started acting, I had a big dream to go racing. <laughs> wow. Wow. So I mean, just good races. for him, dude. Just races, Living out man. another dream. I mean, wow. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. So I guess he like I guess he reached like a point of satisfaction with acting and he was like, enough of that fucking dumb career. I'm gonna become <laughs> an auto racer. Man, good for him, honestly. Getting an F one. Yeah. Shoot. I okay. can't I can't knock okay. it, man. I cannot knock it. In twenty twenty one, Fassbender continued to race with Pro and competition in the European Le Mans series. Fassbender and his co drivers scored a fourth place finishes at the Red Bill at the Red Bull Ring. Eh. The team finished fourth. Team competition championship with sixty one points. Huh. Looks like he's a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, all right. Man, good on him, man. Can't can't uh, knock him guess, for that. Yeah, I guess that's just his life. Yeah. Okay. All right. One more that answers here in this podcast. I poised the question: What happened to one of my favorite actors, Michael Fassbender? In a quick Wikipedia <laughs> search, <laughs> answer that shit. He's active. He's just not movie active. One trip around the World Wide Web later, and we've yeah, right. found out. But, dude, what did you? What have you seen last week? Um, unless you have something else before we get into that. One, one more thing I was gonna say um, regarding movie news that caught my eye. Um, Hellboy. Uh, they're doing another Hellboy film, and this sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't give a shit, but mm-hmm. what they're actually doing with it sounds interesting. I, I didn't even see that. Uh, I've actually never seen any of the Hellboy movies. <laughs> they should do a series. They should stop making movies about that thing. They should just do like a show. Yeah. This, th- By the way, this whole episode, I don't know if you've noticed, has just been me saying that I haven't seen any, like specific yeah. movies. <laughs> like people probably, if this is their first film episode, if this is their f- first episode of Film Tangents, they're playing, what, the, what, what is this shit? These guys haven't seen jack shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. But, no, we haven't seen, we, no, it's just too much <laughs> shit anyway. No, we, Edward and I have seen thousands of movies. Um, yeah. Hellboy the Crooked Man. Will be an R-rated folk horror movie. Folk horror. I mean, like, dude. Honestly, man, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I think so. Again, these days they're doing a lot of bad. They're doing a lot of dumb stuff in in movies, right? They're doing the, you know, like I said, the whole men are stupid. You know, mm-hmm. female sidekick trope. Female sidekick making him look dumb the whole movie. Um, they're doing, uh, you know, let's be honest, like a lot of the woke stuff still, uh, they're doing the meta stuff, right? They're doing a lot of bad shit, but, um, I will say that there are a lot of creative things being done in Hollywood as well these days. Um, new Mm. spins on existing IPs and stuff that I find interesting. Mm. Um, so for example, we talked about it last, I think last week. Um, with the flash, right. That they're doing the whole no way home type thing with the flash. Um, you know, the whole thing a few years back when they did the Joker film, you know, that was really interesting. It was like, Hey, let's take this villain and do a standalone movie about him. Right. Mm. Um, so I don't know on paper, at least it sounds kind of interesting. Um, you know, this, this new Hellboy thing, folk horror. Hey, that sounds kind of. Sounds kind of unique. Well, let's see how they play it, you know. A lot of it is just like, who's attached to these things, you know? Yeah. Because it, it's like, you know, if they're doing this, but the person who's attached to it is like M. Night Shyamalan. It's like, well, <laughs> this is this is this this can only go down from here. Yeah. It says Brian yeah. Taylor is going to be the director. Who is mm. that? Oh, oh, I don't know about this. He, yeah. did, he did Gamer with Gerard Butler. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did Ghost Rider 2. Yeah, I don't know about that. There's a Crank 3? What? Oh, so he's like one of the Crank guys? Yeah. Ben Taylor. Jonah, he- Jonah Hex. Yeah. yeah, these guys are like, these guys are known for making good and bad movies, and movies that are also good and bad at the same time. Yeah. Okay, like so crank movies. he's the guy who directed Crank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first crank and he did yeah, gamer high voltage jonah hex and it looks like he did um yeah yeah ghost rider 2 i mentioned that 
So he hasn't yeah. even done much. And what he has done is, I mean, I haven't questionable. seen questionable. Yeah, yeah, and, and even the good, the goods, the good parts of it are questionable. Like Crank is a questionable. Crank, the Crank movies are questionable movies. You know? <laughs> They're not wholly good. They're like good bad movies. You know. <laughs> They're probably offending some of those people who like those. I've seen those movies. They're not great, you know. They're just like eccentric. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Fuck. I mean, Jason Statham. You know what? 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 Yeah. What's what? 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 What would be Jason Statham's best role? I mean, has he probably really, has one he... of those crank movies? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Has he really been in? Um, I guess the best way to find out is looking them up on Rotten Tomatoes, because because what they do is they rank. On it could be one of those Guy Ritchie movies. Like it could be one of it could be like um, not Lock, Stock, and Two Barrels. The other one that has the one that has Brad Pitt in it. Uh, is that one Lock, Stock, and Two Barrels? What the what is the name of these movies? Let me see. Guy Ritchie. Oh, Spy is his. Oh, you're talking about um, Snatch. Snatch, right? Yeah, yeah. There yeah. You thought of it. At the same yeah, time. Snatch. He's good in Snatch. Yeah. So his highest rated film. On Rotten Tomatoes is Spy from 2015. Uh, that movie with like um that comedian. Um, do you, know, you know what I'm talking about? It's like with a uh, Melissa McCarthy. Rose, Melissa McCarthy. Oh gotcha. Yeah. Rose Burns in it. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I guess we found that out. You know, I've actually seen he was in the Meg. I've I've actually seen the Meg. Did I ever tell you that? Yeah, he was in the Meg. Yeah. Have you seen the Meg? No. <laughs> Not any good? I I mean, it's what you expect. You know, I mean, it was mm. fun. I thought. Uh, I remember. Yeah. From what I remember, um, yeah, it was. You know, uh, it it's exactly what you'd you'd you would expect. Um. Mm. I think I yeah. I remember it being maybe I, I think it exactly met my expectations. I don't think it was worse than I expected. I don't think it was better. Uh, I'm trying to think of more things to say about it, but I really can't. Mm. I mean, it's just you know. Um, but yeah, it was fun. I I like the uh, you know if you can pull off ocean horror decently, um, mm -hmm. I think that's cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, there haven't been really any great ocean horror movies since jaws i feel like um mm. i don't want to so, say it's a any. long time yeah yeah i don't i don't want to <laughs> say since, any since the most since like since like the first good one yeah mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't want to say <laughs> there's any. not mean any others yeah yeah but i mean i'm looking mm. at a list here like you have jaws right mm. i heard the movie triangle is actually really good I don't know what that is. It's a it's an ocean horror movie. It takes place on a boat, like out in the middle of the ocean. Is it about like the Bermuda Triangle or whatever. I think it might be. I think it also has to do with. Apparently, there's. I I've, I this movie gets love. Uh, I'll say. Um, I saw Underwater, with uh, what's her name? Girl from Twilight. Cr mm. uh, Kristen. Kristen Stewart. Kristen Stewart? Yeah, um, that was not. I, I didn't think that was great. I thought that was a little boring. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I certainly loved the idea of it. I mean, it it's um, a Lovecraftian kind of thing, and they're basically in this like marine base at the bottom of the ocean. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought, yeah, uh, and I've never seen forty seven meters down any of that shit. Mm -mm. I've never seen the shallows either. What was that uh, Blake? Not like lively like lively yeah i've seen some like parts of that movie yeah it's like randomly i think it was like on tv and i like, saw like a bit of it yeah it's her and a shark that's what it is and it's like her trying it's like she's like bleeding and the shark's mm -hmm. trying to eat her some of those movies i think it's just her against a shark yeah but that the meg movie is interesting because at least it's like the concept you know the concept of like this humongous shark is pretty uh, you know, I feel like that's like a really good evolution of Jaws. It's like, let's just make it humongous. <laughs> but at the same time, at that point, it kind of feels like overpowering. It's like, dude, if it's yeah. that big, like, how can you fight it? You know? Yeah. I barely yeah. remember. I don't even remember how they defeated it or, or any of that stuff. My my memory's really fuzzy on that movie. It's been a yeah, few they years. they shot it. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> they I, shot it with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pa. 
Well, add. no, the Meg I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, no, I know, okay. I know. I, I thought you were, I thought you were referencing Jaws at first because yeah. I saw Jaws. They're not even in Jaws because Jaws <laughs> they put those like explosives in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He does shoot it. He does shoot the explosive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I rewatched Jaws at, when I went to the beach last summer, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, <clears throat> um and i guess oh crawl crawl i it's not quite ocean horror it's it's mm-hmm. water horror yeah it is water it's water horror yeah, it's that kind was of pretty a, good that was decent yeah there, there's actually mm-hmm. another so i actually remember uh maybe a year year and a half ago now um watching so i watched a, a there was another gator alle- crocodile horror movie that i watched that was actually pretty good um, really? Yeah, it's called. Uh, I don't want to mess it up. Uh, what is it? Yes, uh, Black Water. Black Water. It's based on a true story. It's an Australian horror film. Um, but basically, the story is a pregnant woman, her boyfriend, and her sister take a boat tour of a mangrove swamp where they are terrorized by a killer crocodile. And like the, the movie, two thousand seven. Yeah, the it was pretty good. I thought the movie, um, like the whole movie, they're they're basically in the mangrove swamps, and they're like up in a tree, but like in the swamp, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's like really, it's kind of scary, uh, to be honest. Really? With you. Yeah, the whole movie is like them trying to get from the tree back to their canoe. So they're just like f- being accosted by a crocodile. Yeah, exactly, and um, a little dirty. Yeah, and, and and this is based on a true story, I believe, uh, mm. actually. Uh, but it's like, and it's a, it's in Australia, so it's a saltwater crocodile, and that's like the, yeah. I believe that's the largest living reptile in the world. Crocodiles are scary because different to sharks. I think they're scary in a way that's different from a shark. It's like, you know, the yeah. whole thing with the shark is like, oh, you know, you're in the water and the shark's there in the water and the shark is, the shark is his eyes, you know, there's cold eyes. And, <laughs> like and a nose kill you. eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with crocodiles, you know, I see videos of them sometimes of just like people like just randomly, you know, at a lake and then there's like a crocodile just like staring them down or like, like crocodiles, you know. I feel like they're like a. I feel like crocodiles are a bigger threat to humans than actual or like alligators, you know, shit like that. I feel like those reptiles are a bigger threat to us than fucking sharks, you know. Yeah. Well, I think sharks only kill like a few people a year. Oh yeah, I think you're you're more likely to die by cow than by shark, like a cow <laughs> uh, um, falling on you or something. Cow <laughs> falling. <laughs> I think we have more people get killed by cows each year yeah. than sharks. I I wonder. Yeah. I don't know if that's by being trampled or or is that counting bulls as well? Mm. That's got to count bulls. I mean, fucking cows. They they don't do anything. Mm. But the crocodile crocodile attacks on humans are common in places where large crocodilians are native and human populations live. It's been estimated that about a thousand people are killed by crocodilians <laughs> each year. Damn, dude. <laughs> and dude, I think it's like I think it's in the it's a bunch single of people. digits that are attacked. I think it's I think it's in the double digits people who are attacked by sharks and in single digits dude. of people who die by shark. Dude, it's in the four digits people who die by crocodile. That's actually like that means that you can probably die by crocodile. It's not that unlikely. A thousand people every year are killed by crocodiles. Dude, there were nine shark related fatalities this year. <laughs> in in, yeah. in twenty what is this? Twenty twenty two. In twenty twenty two there were wait, let me see. Global so there were fifty seven worldwide in twenty twenty two there were fifty seven worldwide unprovoked shark bites shark bites and mm. five were fatal yeah that's that's uh yeah that's really scary low. man well so i one thing too about so what you're saying i think is i so i th- i think the part of the reason is so we we've always i think we've all heard this too with sharks um sharks don't see us as prey 
items. Mm -hmm. So usually when a shark attacks, it's either they're being territorial or it's mistaken identity. So someone in a wetsuit, they think it's a seal. Someone Mm -hmm. on a surfboard, they think it's a sea turtle. Um, Brandon Frazier's in the water. They think it's a whale, right? Like that. <laughs> but, yes. but uh, yeah. But with crocodiles and alligators, um, I believe they actually do see humans as just another prey item. I could be wrong on that. I'm not sure. I'm not a biologist, obviously, mm-hmm. but um, I think they their behavior is a bit different, where they don't mind you know, trying, trying out, trying human, basically. They're, they're creepers. Cause like a lot of the videos that I see of them, just like, are just them, are just literally them just waiting. They're like very opportunistic. You yeah. Know? Cause they, they don't just like run at people. You know, I guess they, they probably do some of them, but a lot of the videos that I see is just like them being like super sneaky, just like sitting idly. Oh you know, yeah. Just sitting very idly, just like waiting, you know, and that shit's creepy, man. And I've also seen video of just people like canoeing, <laughs> and then suddenly like, the canoe, their canoe gets like bumped. Have you seen those videos? Dude, I just sent you one. Go look at the yeah. general chat. I was just looking yeah. this up while you and, were talking. And the thing is that the, I the watched this like last probably, week. No, dude, I've seen this exact same one. This is the Have exact you? same one that I was talking about. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. 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 Everyone. And then go- the guy just freaks out. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to put it. Um, I have to remember to put it in the video description. We gotta start putting our citations. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah. Um it's called Alligator Charging Kayak seven twelve twenty. That's the date on it, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, dude, this is a really scary video. Like the guy's canoe uh, kayaking basically uh through the water, and then all of a sudden, like at um Oh my god. Yeah, it's at the I'm watching 50, it right now. Yeah, at the fifty second mark, dude. Yeah, I'm watching. Just see and, again, it and he lunge. tips. He tips to the side. Yeah. And then when his head goes into that just black water of the swamp, dude. Oh my yeah. god, that's so creepy, man. Ooh, man. Oh. Then he's just there, and he's just like there, like what the fuck? Yeah, because you probably don't think, you know. I mean, if you're doing that, if you're doing that right in a swamp where you know there's gators you your line of thinking has to be that's not going to happen right you don't think Mm -hmm. that gators are going to do that right but clearly that's not the case (laughs) no clearly that's not the case i bet that guy didn't do that shit again oh my god dude i just i just pulled up this other one it's called chased by a big alligator exclamation point this guy's being chased on land by an alligator (laughs) Yeah, it's not even in the water. That they run so, funny too. They're they're pretty fast. Oh yeah, that so that's another thing though too. This guy's just fucking gunning it. He starts just going so fast. You gotta get the fuck out of here. That's survival for you, bro. Yeah, so that's the thing too. Sharks, you can get away from them, right? But gators, they can get out of the water and fucking run yeah, your ass they'll down. Keep, they'll keep coming after you. They're pretty fast, dude. Yeah, they I have believe- those little stubby legs, but they're pretty fast. Let, wait. I think they can run as fast as like, uh, I mean, I've heard as fast as a horse. I don't think that's accurate. I don't think that's accurate. How but they can run pretty fast. Fast do alligators run twenty miles an hour, dude? No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm sorry. That's... You can ride one of those guys, dude. Wait, no, wait, them. no. Wait a second. That's that's in the water, on land. In water, an alligator can reach a top speed of 20 miles per hour. Are you ready to hear how fast they fucking run on land? Oh. 35 miles per My hour. My God, they're faster. Holy shit. They're even faster. Though they're known to tire quickly. That's- yeah, that's, that's the thing. That's what I was going to say. I, I know they have short stamina. I think that if you're a person that's like in a pretty fit condition for running – and you can run fast. Like if you have, you know, if you have pretty good strides, I think you can outrun an alligator. Yeah, I mean, if you have a head start, I mean, yeah, sure. if you have a head start, if if it's close to you, I think it got you. Yeah, you're <laughs> like if you're like at an arm's reach from it, it's you're done. So, <laughs> oh my god, man! So I, th- I think they're, I think they're zero to sixty. It's like really quick. Yeah. I'm really happy I've <laughs> never been attacked by an animal, dude. Uh, animal attacks are really scary. 
I, mm. I remember when I was a kid, I was watching something. I think it was like National Geographic, and it was something. It, it, I want to say the show was called Man Eaters or something. Mm-hmm. And the show was about animal attacks, basically. And the, I remember this guy had gotten his face mauled by a bear or something. Mm-hmm. And and at one point, he's talking to the camera, and he has like this disguise on, like these sungla- these big sunglasses or something. And then I remember at one point he like takes the sunglasses off and he's just like missing the top part of his face. Like his eyes are gone and, and, and yeah. dude, it scarred me as a kid, man. Because he got attacked by a grizzly while he was fishing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Wild animals. I was watching, <clears throat> watching like some like video. Um, I was watching like a Rogan video and they were like talking about like a bear attack. Yeah, and he 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 said to Jamie, Jamie, pull the video. So Jamie pulled up a video about, <laughs> about you know like some guy getting like attacked like a bear. Yeah, and the guy is like on a tree. The guy is like climbing the tree, and the bear comes down from the tree oh, God. at the guy. You know, so he's not even expecting this. The bear is just already on the tree, and as the guy is going up the tree, the bear is just charging down the tree at him, and the bear like misses him. You know, because the bear is coming downward, you know, the bear doesn't really get a grip on him. But after the bear falls down the tree, the bear then starts charging him up the tree. Oh, my God. And he's just kicking at the bear, you know. And Rogan, like, plays the video. He's just kicking at the bear. And the thing that I'm thinking about is just, like, the the screams. Because the guy is screaming in, like, the most... <laughs> And I started laughing. I, I think I, I think in my head I wanted to send this to you, but I didn't. Like just like film it and send it to you. <laughs> I started laughing because Rogan goes like that's you, you, you go, <laughs> he goes like that's a prehistoric scream. <laughs> 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 he goes like that's a scream of like pure just human <laughs> animalistic <laughs> prehistorical survival, you know. <laughs> and then Rogan himself imitates the guy, which is hilarious. The imitation that he does. Because the guy goes like, whoa! <laughs> it's like from his guts, dude. It's just like, <laughs> oh my god! Man. And the guy's just like kicking at the bear as the bear is coming at him. Um, I think he survived that attack, that guy. And from what I, from what they stated on the show, he survived that attack because the bear was just like a teenager. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's so like, it wasn't like oh, even so that's fully the developed. Only reason he, did, he survived. That's the only reason. The the bear was like not fully developed. If it had actually been like a full grown bear, that guy would have been done, dude. Well, also the though, screams would have been his last. <laughs> what kind of? But was he it a, survived to scream another day. Was it a black bear or a grizzly bear? Do you know? Do I you think remember? it was a black bear. So yeah, and I almost feel like too. So I think teenage, like younger bears too. Um, I would, th- you would think would be more inclined to chase a human like that because they don't mm-hmm. know what a human is possibly. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I feel, I feel that older bears actually, um, avoid people too. So that, that kind of yeah. makes sense that he was, you know, not always, they don't always avoid people, but, um, yeah, it's funny you brought up Rogan because I, as we were talking about alligators versus sharks, I was like, this is turning into very, this is Rogan territory for sure. This is, this is Rogan territory. <laughs> I was like, this has turned into a Rogan podcast real fast. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was quite a tangent and, and it started from what I was watching this week. But anyway, yeah. to answer that, to answer that question really quickly, yeah. um, I, yeah. w- I've been watching the new season of You. Uh, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been wa- continuing to watch the show Mr. Robot. Fucking phenomenal. Um, and then I watched the new episode of The Last of Us. Fucking great. Mm-hmm. You've, been, you've been enjoying some like really good television. Yeah. No, I think so. I think uh, I'm, I'm at a sweet spot with tel- TV shows right now. Um, it's good because I, I felt like I didn't have my fix for a little while um, after Better Call Saul went off the air. Although I did watch, um, I don't think I've even I even mentioned it, but I did finish The Wire a few weeks ago too, um, mm. before I started Mr. Robot, um, and um, yeah, The Wire, great show, man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it is a little dated in terms of you know how television was done back then, 
in the early 2000s, um, you know, just kind of format wise. But, um, you know, uh, I think the, the story, you know, the storytelling is fantastic and the characters are fantastic. It's a, fa- it's a phenomenal, um, excuse me, deconstruction of like the system you know, from top level government all the way down to the the streets to ga- gangs, you know, uh, all the way down to even the homeless. It explores. Um, so yeah, very thought provoking show, um, and it had a solid, pretty solid ending. I would say definitely. But yeah, that's what right. I've been up to. What about you, sir? Well, for me, no television, as it goes. <laughs> um, although, like, if there's anything that's like at the top of my priorities, is The Last of Us. Yeah. If I show up on this show and I say I've watched anything, it's probably that. Um, I'm still we'll waiting for you true. to start Hannibal. I know. I, I know. think you'll we'll fucking, see how you'll, true these things remain. Dude, you'll fucking love Hannibal, I'm telling you. David, but, David Lynch and Stanley Kubrick meets Silence of the Lambs. I'm telling you. Mm. Fucking great. But. The Last of Us, and I think of then Hannibal. It's like on my list of priorities. We'll see, we'll see which one I start. If you know, yeah. But I'm not holding my breath. In terms of, <laughs> in terms of actual, in terms of actual like art consumption, I listened to albums as I do because this is basically me. This is basically you watch shows and movies, and I listen to an album. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have movies and shows and and music recommendations. Is what is what this section has become. Um, I listened to the Corday album. Um, you know who that is? Oh, uh, why is it YBN? Yeah, he used to be, but not anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't listened to really any of his music uh, except for yeah. when you've played him. No, I play. I listened to because I had listened to his his last album he released last year, which was not good. Um, and I listened to his 2019 album, The Lost, The Lost Boy. Um, and I gotta say, man, great album, you know, underrated because people don't really talk about it too much. He was nominated for a Grammy too. And that was his first album. He got nominated for a Grammy like out, out the box, you know? Um, now which one is this from a bird's eye view? Mm, that's the bad that's the bad one oh, that's okay. like his second album the good one is the lost boy um that's oh, a good gotcha. album man that's like a good album like legitimately just good you know legit just good like seven out of ten you know strong like you know strong album you know good good listening almost no bad tracks you know obviously there's like the you know there's like the more trendy tracks like have mercy was like the big hit from that album and broke as F was also one of the big hits from that album. But then every other song here, you know, like RNP with uh, Anderson Pack, Bad Idea with Chance the Rapper, you know, um, the song Thanksgiving, you know, Thousand Words, Way Back Home with Ty Dolla Sign, Nightmares Are Real with Pusha T. Great song, man. Great song. We Go Make It, song number 14 with Mick Meal. Great song, you know. There's, I mean, he just came out swinging, like such a great album. He just wore his, like, um, he wore his um, influences on his sleeves. Like, this album is 101% like a super Kanye influenced, you know, super um, common influenced, super um, J. Cole influenced album front to back you interesting. know interesting i gotta check this yeah out. there's so much so much soul you know there's so much out. soul to that album a lot of soul samples a lot of like funky jazz instrumentation and every single feature is good anderson pack's great as he always is you know mm-hmm. dance is good ty Dawson is good Pusha t is good you know make meals good it's good you know like if you listen to this album you'll just kind of be like oh Song to song to song to song. There's something to enjoy, you know. I listened to this album like three or four times. And even the songs that I didn't really like that much, like Have Mercy, grew on me, you know. Solid record, you know, really recommend it. Um, I think that guy's really talented. Like, I think that guy is like probably one of the most 
talented just rappers like young rappers mm -hmm. and he had a bad follow-up to his album but i think he can put it together again like if he made this record he can make something good again yeah um and outside of that i think i list i think did i talk about this last week i listened to conway the machine did i did i did i mention this guy last week no okay so I listened to Conway, the machine. He's one of the guys from uh, Griselda. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the big, he's one of, he's one of the three horsemen. <laughs> As I keep bringing that analogy up. <laughs> one of the three horsemen, big horsemen of uh, Griselda. It's him, it's West Saigon, and it's uh, Benny the Butcher. All three of those guys, incredible. Oh, yeah. um, Conway, amazing. I re-listened to From King to a God. I don't really have to say much about, about that album. It's amazing. It's just Griselda, you know, throwback, boom bap, you know, jazz, you know, funky rap. There's not that much to say about it. You know, just no frills, just rap, you know, and it's the best. Um, whenever I listen to a Griselda album, whether it's Conway or whether it's Benny, I'm always so, like, happy, you know, because it's like the most, you know, it's like just hip hop, you know, like if, if you say to somebody like, hey man, you know, like what's hip hop? Like, oh, fucking listen to one of these Griselda records, you know, it's, it's bringing like 90s, like, you know, um, machismo and 90s um, confidence and bravado to like modern aesthetics, you know, with a lot of these songs being produced by like The Alchemist, you know, mm -hmm. um, just great. Nothing else to say. From King to a God is eight out of 10. Great album. And then I listened to God, God Don't Make Mistakes, this album from last year, which got like critical acclaim from everybody. You know, there's not a single critic that I could tell you had said anything negative about this album. Now I'm not going to say anything negative about this album. It's amazing. You know, 9 out of 10, incredible album. You know, again, Conway the Machine is a machine. And his <laughs> fucking albums are fucking amazing. <laughs> Tear Gas with Rick Ross and Lil Wayne is amazing out of that album. The song number two, the song Piano Love is great. The song Guilty is great. The song Young Woo, uh, John Woo Flick is fucking great. You know, like any song, just pop any song from this album and it's great. Um, not much complaints. Just fucking great music. Nice, and man. then I follow this up by listening to fucking d'angelo i re-listened to all his three albums i re-listened to brown sugar i re-listened to voodoo and i re-listened to black messiah all three of those albums nine out of tens if not ten out of tens fucking d'angelo it's fucking amazing r&b you know not much to say about that either um that's what i got just a lot of music a lot of a lot of enjoyment i mean dude i've really enjoyed listening to like just Conway to Corday to D'Angelo. I really enjoy that back to back to back. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I know it's on my li uh, listening list. Uh, I because I definitely like Conway the Machine. Yeah. Um, quite a bit, and yeah, yeah, I mean Alchemist, one of the you know best modern producers. I think mm -hmm. definitely a Mad Lib disciple. Him and uh, mm -hmm. Harry Fraud. Mm -hmm. Musica de Harry Fraud. <laughs> Musica de Harry, yeah, it was Harry Fraud produced, I think, um, he produced front to back one of um, Benny's great albums. I forget which one it is. It's like the one oh, with God. like, it's like the one, it, huh? No, no, go ahead. Um, it's like the one that has like a Scarface cover. I'm just going to look it up since I have my Apple Music open. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Go to the B. Benny the Butcher. So I think we're really liking that record. I think Benny the Butcher is the one I've listened to the least out of those three. Mm. So it's I... the plugs I met too. That's the one that because it says Benny the Butcher and Harry Fraud. You see this one? You see the cover right there? Yeah. With this like mafia guys shaking hands. Yeah, gotcha. I see it. Yeah. Great, great record. Scarface. Yeah, Harry Fraud produced that entire one. Yeah. Shaking Sosa's hand. <laughs> yeah. And then the Plugs I Met one. Harry Fraud didn't produce that one, but that the the Plugs I Met one is better than the Plugs I Met two. Okay. Um Benny's great. Benny is like just as good as Conway. And I enjoy them the same, you know. And Benny has Burden of Proof, this album right here, mm -hmm. with like his eyes uh blacked out. 
amazing yeah. album. And he has Tana Talk, which is like a, a messed up picture of him like as a kid. And he has Tana Talk 4, which was his album from last year, because both him and Conway had albums last year. And Tana Talk 4 is just as good as that Conway album. They're both. Benny and Conway are both just best. Yes. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Oh, but so, love and, and you, yeah. And I wanted to say, too, you mentioned him just now. Uh, you mentioned Pusha T because he's featured on mm. – uh, on uh, uh I think y- YBN uh yeah Corday's album uh yeah he's featuring that the song called Nightmares Are Real which is a great song yeah so actually co- coincidentally this week I have actually been re-listening to Daytona uh mm-hmm. by Pusha T uh, mm-hmm. I haven't listened to that album in forever dude you know I think that's a perfect album oh my god dude it's so good like dude I, I think I think it's perfect I think it's a ten out of ten. Yeah, I do too. I mean, the free dude, the freaking the games we play that beat Ooh. Kanye. Yeah, oof. Ooh. Kanye destroy that record. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's something. I think that's a, I think 2018 for Kanye is a year that has to be studied. Oh yeah, because that year for him, you know, Kitsy Ghosts, Daytona. Um, the Ye album, which I do like. I know that you have reservations about that record. But he, he creatively, he went on like a run, man. You know, he produced a great uh, Tiana Taylor album during that time too. Um, it was just great. Like he just had like, you know, he just had like such, what do they call it? They, he called it like a cruel summer or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it was like a good it was a good music cruel summer yeah so, and i remember that he did that because he was trying to intimidate drake remember that's when that beef was happening oh yeah yeah and then drake released his shitty ass uh scorpio album. <laughs> yeah anyway i just thought i'd mention that quick yeah. but uh i think we better get into the movie yeah let's do it we don't have much time um yeah. so yeah we watched Witch Master. Yeah, we watched watched Wishmaster. Everybody, both our first time seeing it, nineteen ninety seven film, uh, directed by mm-hmm. Robert Kurtzman. Uh, to I believe Wes Craven produced it. Yes, did, executive yeah. produced it. Um, what, what what you got on Wishmaster? I had fun. I had fun with that movie. Yeah, it was a fun time. It's a short movie, so it didn't like overstay its welcome. Um, I thought the premise was like really interesting. It reminded me there's an episode of Fairly Odd Parents. I don't know if you've seen this show or that episode. Yeah, there's an episode of that show where like Timmy finds a, like a lamp and he gets like a genie, and anything that he asks the genie, it, the genie just does like a cruel version of that. So yeah. that's reminded me of that. Like Timmy would be like, "Oh, I want a, I want an omelet," and he would just give it to him like an omelet in his bare hands, like a steaming hot omelet, and like burn his hands. You know? <laughs> um, that's like the kind of shit he would do. And they did like multiple episodes with that genie. They were always fun. So the, you know, the genie out, Jimmy outsmarted the genie, or like Timmy outsmarted the Jimmy. The, ah, fuck. <laughs> he was part of the genie at the end of the episode. And then, because of that, the genie wanted, like, revenge against him, you know, in, like, following episodes. Yeah. The Jimmy, the, the Jimmy, fuck, the genie <laughs> teamed up with uh, Crocker um, to, like, a get stroke. back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Jimmy, the Timmy, the Jimmy, the genie, the Timmy. The Timmy, the Jimmy. Oh, Timmy, Timmy, um, Timmy Turner. Even with yeah, but <laughs> that's what this reminded me of. Where I was just like, "Oh, he's just he's just mischievous." This this gin, as they call it here. Yeah. Um, I thought that the scene in which he appeared was the scariest part of the movie. When it like when he's birthed, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that was creepy, and he and he crawls over to. Yeah, and he's like this like weird baby form. Yeah, yeah, and just I scrolls wanted... up to him, and he was like, "Do you want me to release you from the pain?" Just say, it. You know? yeah, and he kills the guy basically, and yeah. and I thought that was a clever um, wish granting, where sometimes with these wishes, right, in in various media, whether it's Fairly Odd Parents or whatever, that's a trope, right? The the bad wish granted. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it seems like the wish granter, whoever, or whatever it is, right, is sort of cheating where it's like, all right, that's stretching it, you know, like, 
you know, you do you know what I mean by that? Where where someone makes a wish, right? And they're like, oh, I wish I could, you know, sleep. And then the the no that I'm trying to think of an example, like mm-hmm. like where someone's like, oh, you know, I wish I uh, you know, had uh, you know, I wish I had money, right? Like later in the movie, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I want to be rich, right? And it's like, oh, he like kills his mom, <laughs> yeah. But that that part <laughs> felt, dude, that part that part was so stupid. Like that part was so yeah. goofy. That part felt. I, I wanted. I wrote this down. That part felt like a Rick and Morty or a Family Guy skit. It reminded mm. me of that that, <laughs> that Family Guy bit where they're trying to give Quagmire like diseases or whatever. Do you know what I'm uh-huh. talking about? And they're like sticking so. all those needles in them. And then yeah. Peter's like, wait, hang on. And he like gets a taxi, goes to the airport, go flies to Africa, gets a mosquito, and then comes mm. back and like makes it bite Quagmire. <laughs> and then Quagmire yeah. gets the disease, right? And it and it happens yeah. like in, in, in 30 seconds, basically. Yeah. Um yeah. That reminded me of that, where he's like, he's like, I want to, I wish for a million dollars, and the <laughs> wishmaster's like, or the gin is, like, oh I, yeah, your wish is granted. <laughs> and it cuts. Uh, the, but the funny thing is, like, how did that come true? Like, yeah, because you know, we never went back there. It's like, what was the resolution of that? You know? Yeah. Did he just leave and goes like, oh, your money will be in the mail tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, I I don't know. And doesn't it cut right back to them in the same room after after the plane crashes? I don't think so. No, yeah, because there's no way because that had to happen over several days, right? Yeah, yeah, that was really goofy. But I think you know it was definitely meant to be goofy. But yeah. um, yeah, you no, know, that that definitely was the scariest scene where the gin was was birthed or whatever, and then it like mm-hmm. starts. And and they kind of ruined the scene when it starts fading in and out, like it cuts back to the girl with her horrified mm-hmm. face. Yeah, and then it cuts yeah, back. Do that. And forth. They do that all throughout that movie. Yeah, it cuts back and forth between her horrified face having this vision, and then the gin coming out of its birthing sack or whatever. Mm-hmm. They ruined that scene. They should have just kept us in that dark room with that thing, yeah. you know, the gin yeah. coming out. Yeah. Um. And I felt, I felt like this movie. So you know, I had fun with it. Um, one thing I will say though is, I feel like they didn't go goofy enough with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I sort, mm-hmm. I sort of feel, I don't know, not goofy enough. Maybe, maybe over the top enough. Mm-hmm. I just felt like there were still parts of the movie that were maybe trying to be serious. Mm-hmm. that were trying you know that weren't being tongue in cheek um i don't know i just felt the tone and in, insert in I, I maybe i don't know i felt like the tone might have been inconsistent at certain parts i don't know if you felt yeah. that way i did feel that way i did because it's like there's like this r-rated horror movie and there's like a lot of body horror here you know a lot of like kind of gory stuff i mean a lot of gory stuff but particularly at some point the dialogue like at some point the genie the gene became like freddy krueger you yeah. know and who's also in this movie <laughs> and you know he, that right what do you mean the 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 actor who plays freddy krueger he's the the art the museum curator or whatever oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah i didn't know that no i didn't know that that's freddy krueger yeah robert england but I, you know, there were like moments like that where it's like, okay, there's stuff here that it feels like the tone of the film is like, oh, this is trying to be legitimately like unsettling. Mm. And then there's shit like when he says, you know, when he says to her, the shit just hit the fan, didn't it? <laughs> you remember that scene? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at yeah. that point, I was like, oh, this guy's like Venom, you know, he's like fucking Freddy Krueger in like the third Freddy Krueger movie, you know? Right. Like, yeah, like... <laughs> There were tonal kind of like whiplashes through this movie for sure. Yeah, that that's a great way of putting it. That definitely is a good way of putting it. I also didn't, mm. I, I wasn't sure exactly what the gins, what the rules were surrounding the gin. 
Um, I did not know either. Because there was that point in which he says to like the guard, it's like it's 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 frustrating that your powers can only be accessed if somebody you know says they want something or whatever. And I was like, okay. But then there's times where people say they want something, and then he has a complete free reign. Like at the end of the movie, like the the ending, yeah. like um, set pieces, where the guy says like, I would like for this party to be, you know, um, fantastic or mind blowing or whatever. And yeah. then he just has like complete control of everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. He just like kills everybody, you know, and it just keeps going, you know, because that guy dies. But the stuff just keeps going. Like the statues start moving and he's, you know, and it's just like, dude, you seem to still be doing things, you know, like what's going on? Like (laughs) what's going on, bro? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I felt that way too. um, Where I, yeah, I I was, I, I was, that was the biggest, that was the part that really bumped for me too, where I was just like, okay, wait a second. Now this guy can make statues move. No one wished for mm. statues to move, right? Exactly. Like, Nobody wished for that. Like, no one is wishing for any of the shit that you're doing. Yeah. And, and, and also, so what, what was the deal? He could get other people to make wishes, right? Mm. But it had to be the the main girl making three who specific wishes yeah. who released him. Okay, yeah, no, that that yeah. made sense. And then or the who, other people were just or not, or not who released his... him because 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 he he was like clearly free. He was doing whatever he wanted. Like I think the only thing he could actually get from getting her to do the three wishes was that if she asked for him for three wishes, he could like release like his demon friends. Oh, his friends. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think that was the only thing he could get from her. Because otherwise, he was just doing whatever he wanted. And there was, like, no c- limitations on him. Like, mm-hmm. I think they could have added some sort of, some sort of like, agency to him by basically being, like, you know, at some point saying something like, oh, he can only be on Earth for three days, you know. Right. Or, you know, like, he's going to start decaying and at some point he's going to go back into the stone. None of that is ever said. None of that. Like, none right. of that. None of that it's ever said. Like, it literally just seems, literally, he just has free reign. He can just do whatever he wants, you know. He can yeah. just do whatever he wants. Like, it even begs the question of, like, why did you even bother, you know, with, like, this whole shenanigans, with trying to get the three wishes. Like, who cares, dude? You could do whatever. <laughs> yeah, know? why do you need all your friends with you? Yeah. <laughs> Like, did, you, did you make some promises? Did you make some pinky swears? Like, what is going on, man? And, and also, the, the, why? And, and also, I want to say too, her first wish mm. is really stupid when she's mm. uh, when she's like, "I wish to know what you are." It's like, okay, this is no. That was, yeah, she, yeah, there's that was no the reason for her character to wish for that besides exposition yeah. for the audience to show exactly. us that he has no. like all these torture chambers and his little. Thing. No, it made like the, it made the, complete. It made complete no sense especially since like she had been studying him this whole time and at the end of the movie the thing that helped her defeat him was like all this studying that she was doing it was not you know her saying to him i want to know what you are that didn't even give her access to like no you know what what the end game solution was it did nothing you know yeah it just got her chased by this dumb dog rabbit turtle creature yeah. thing <laughs> which, which you know what that was happening i was like well that thing can't do anything to her because the genie needs her to make more wishes you know and that was another dumb part there's a part <laughs> do you remember when they're in that party and the statues mm-hmm. come to life she's like you can't kill me and he's like yeah you're right i can't and then one of the statues hurls a fucking trident at her head and she ducks. It's like, dude, that would have yeah, killed dude, her. If she hadn't dug, that would have killed her. And you would have not been able to bring your friends to her. Like, Jin, what are you doing? Yeah, but also but also the Jin, the Jin himself had like no like again, like he, the Jin is like a co-protagonist. Like we spend so much time with just him and his shenanigans. Yeah, like he has a goal, but he has no like he has no clear stakes. Like, you know, there's like, there's really no reason for him to be doing this. And I just ultimately just felt like, I just ultimately thought to myself, like the Jin is a failure. Because he has existed for like, you know, eons of time. <laughs> and he seemingly has never been able to succeed. 
<laughs> and the one thing that he's supposed to succeed at getting people to make three fucking wishes. <laughs> dude, he's an idiot. Nobody has, ever, nobody has ever made three wishes from that guy. Nobody, you know. Yeah, I mean, may, uh, hey, how about this, Jin? If you want someone to actually <laughs> trust you and make three wishes, how about don't appear to them in them. your yeah. fucking full form? Yeah, yeah. yeah how, about actually, how about actually grant the fucking wishes? <laughs> grant them. <laughs> Like, if somebody says to you, like, hey, Jen, could you give me, like, a million bucks? Fucking give them a million bucks. If somebody says, like, hey, Jen, make me taller. Make them taller. Like, don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't break their bones and then put, like, yeah. stumps or something. Like, dude. Don't if you kill want somebody, their mom if they yeah. want money. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you want somebody to make these three wishes for you. Just fucking give them three wishes, and that's it. <laughs> Just know. grant the fucking wishes, dude. But then, <laughs> like, dude, this goes back like to you our said, demon. Don't appear in your grotesque, weird man form. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> if you wanted to trust you, don't appear as Jeepers fucking creepers, dude. <laughs> but dude, this goes back to our demon conversation. Yeah. This is what I was saying. Yeah. Where if demons actually existed, and they're these beings older than fucking time. Dude, yeah. they would be smart enough to know these yeah. things. <laughs> and the <laughs> Jin himself, like, wants... Jin himself wants to poise as, like, some kind of, like, smart, smarter than thou, you know? Yeah. Like, he even starts the movie speaking, like, in a very kind of, like, archaic way. Yet, he's an idiot. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> an idiot. And maybe that was the point of the movie, to which uh, I say, you should have made it funnier. Yeah. That that's the problem. I think you, they needed to make it funnier. I, they needed to have. Uh, they needed to do. I I really do think they needed to do maybe a little more. Uh, honestly, there's a lot of carnage in this movie, but I think there could have been more, dude. I think they could have done more gore, more of the over the top, like ridiculous body horror. Um, they should have gone full fucking Evil Dead Two with this movie, and I think it would have been mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and oh, I think, yeah, that, that would have made the movie better for sure. Yeah, because I, I think that's why people like this movie is I think it gives it because it definitely delivers on similar levels to something like Evil Dead 2, but it just mm. lacks the successful. It just lacks the the execution of the humor, uh, the, you know, intricate camera work and just the sheer volume and quality, quantity and quality of gore mm -hmm. body horror effects um yeah it just kind of falls it, it's it's a movie that falls slightly short on all levels i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while it doesn't fall flat on all levels it falls slightly short of the mark on all levels yeah it, it, yeah which is yeah. kind of a really mean thing to say about a movie but it's just kind of, mm -hmm. it's kind of true it's um, true I, I described the Jin as a street poet at one point. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like when, when he first talks to that homeless guy and he's like dressed like in this hoodie and stuff. It's like, dude, who, who are you? <laughs> and he's talking to him like, if you wish for this, you know, you yeah. must do this. Indeed, you know, it's like, dude, it's like, who are you? Man? You're just not like, <laughs> it's not like a weird guy who's in the streets, like writing poetry, you know, <laughs> and then he like smokes the cigarette. Yeah. And he's like, go tell who you masked of what happened, you know, for however long time you have before your soul disappears. <laughs> I was like, wish master, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. A weirdo. Yeah. yeah. And the performance was really over the top and it would have worked. Oh, it was in, really over the top. And that guy was great. I mean, that actor, you can't say anything against that actor. No, um, that guy was great. I loved his performance. He was not the issue at all. Yeah. It, it, you should have yeah it's just it was more with the writers and directors i mean if you if you stuck that guy in a full-on like r-rated tim burton slash evil dead 2 movie oh fucking awesome dude it would have been so good it would have mm. been so good but uh yeah yeah that that was my thing with this movie i just kept thinking of evil dead 2 i was like if you're gonna yeah. go that route go fucking all in yeah you know, no, they and, didn't commit. And, and like, the, like, you know, yeah, it didn't commit. Yeah, You're right. The, the movie still ends up kind of being, you know, the movie still ends up being fun and not being like boring. Sure. But you really do feel that, like, or at least I felt that, you know, where I was just like, oh man, this could have been so much better. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Probably like if this guy hadn't directed it, what's his name, Kurtzman? But like Rory Kurtzman hadn't directed this, it would have been better. It's like there's so much shitty shit in this movie too, like shitty music. Yeah. You know, weird performances, silly stuff. Like that guy, like the tennis guy. You know, like that was a silly character. That that friend zoned mm. guy. Really bad dialogue. Yeah, really bad dialogue. Was that that guy died immediately? You know, and then obviously he showed up again at the end when the movie did some time travel, which I did, I didn't even know that shit was fucking possible. Right. It should just like when she asked him that, I was like, I was, "That's the moment in which I was like, they should have established the fucking rules." Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, they needed to cover some ground bases in this movie where it just feels like the end of the. And I always hate when shit like this happens in movies. When the ending of a movie is that is basically just like an errata on everything that happened before. It's like, right. oh, we're just you know, you see, you, know, you you just watch an hour and a half of content. And now we're going to say that all of that that you watched didn't happen. You know, yeah. the character is going to wish for some time traveling shit and it just, it's gone, you know? Yeah. Gee. yeah. Like you're going to tell me, yeah. I mean, you're going to tell me that this, the, a gin, a, a little imp demon thing can control <laughs> time. I don't think yeah. so. You know, I get yeah. I get that they're powerful. They can grant wishes, but uh, a gene, yeah. you know, controlling time, you know, that's fucking godlike i don't know yeah yeah but yeah absolutely they should have established it, 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 that earlier it was done as like time it, you know and it's funny because at the end of the movie it's like treated as this like big like oh my gosh she, she outs by the jenny you know <laughs> but it's like she, but it's like she could have wished for that exact same thing in so many different ways you know like mm. the other thing she said was like oh i wish that that guy hadn't been drinking you know and it's like okay you know like you could have wished like, I feel like you really could have wished, like, oh, I wish that, you know, you would have never, you know, I wish that your little stone, she could have said, like, I wish that, you know, three days ago, instead of being inside of that rock, that you as a little stone had just magically manifested at the bottom of the ocean, you know, and and it was impossible for you to, to reach surface, you know. <laughs> like, she could have said that to him, and he would have been like, oh, I, oh shit, I guess I have to grant that. I've been <laughs> defeated, you know. It's like, yeah. really? <laughs> All that it took for you to defeat this guy was to be like, I wish that three days ago you had been, something else had happened instead of you getting out of that rock, you know? Yeah, and the way she delivered that line was just so stupid, too. And the yeah. verbiage of the line, they could have reworded it where it sounded cooler. But she's just like, yeah. I wish that so-and-so was not, was not drinking, drinking on the job. And it was just yeah. like, oh. Yeah. And it just it, yeah. it almost felt like an an addiction public service announcement thing yeah. too, yeah. Where, where it was just like addiction is a disease, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you drink while well, do while well, you do your job, you're going to manifest a gin to the world that will both be a poet and a demon yeah. of massive destruction with unexplained powers that has a fascination for a specific woman that needs to ask <laughs> three wishes of him. Yeah. Because she, like, blew on the thing and then rubbed it against her shirt. Even though that seemed really unprofessional. Like, when that happened, I was like, you're a professional, like, um, appraiser of, like, valuable stones and crystals, and this is the way that you do it. You fucking blow on it. You go, <laughs> <laughs> And then you rub it against your shirt it's like oh great yeah 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 good stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's the, uh, ultimately i was like the, the person who really released this gin was the guy like her her friend you know yeah like put like a laser on it and like destroy <laughs> the stone and the fucking gene came out like yeah. isn't that guy really the one fucking responsible for this? Is yeah, really not her? the appraiser. Oh, maybe because she yeah. blew on it, Edward. Because <laughs> yeah, so she blew on it because she rubbed it on her fucking shirt. Oh, maybe that was like the genie lamp because you rub the genie lamp. I don't yeah. know. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, I assume that's what happened. But <laughs> even when that happened, I was like, that's so contrived. You know, like I was like, that's just so fucking contrived. They didn't. They didn't have to work so hard for this. They didn't have to make her job be like, "Oh, I'm a fucking stone appraiser." You know, it's like, "Oh, did that really have to be her job?" She could have been doing anything. You know, like <laughs> and that's anything. another thing with her too. She had no character, no character arc, anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was just a nothing. She's so one dimensional, no. flat character. No. 
But static. that actress, like, she overcommitted. Yeah. Like, she's overcommitted, dude. Her performance was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, probably the, one of probably the worst, like, final girl. Uh, yeah, like, like yeah. the the scenes. I don't know if you remember this. But there's the scene where one of her blackout scenes where then the the guy, the guy who plays Freddy Krueger, is like waking her up. She was like experiencing the genie or whatever. And her face is ridiculous. Like, I had to go back to that, like, multiple times. Because I was like, oh, yeah. my God. She's making, like, this face. Like, like she's making this face. Like, somebody's actively trying to kill her. Like, it was so genuine. It was, like, that whole thing with, like, you know, they torn my arms off and they throw it over there. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So over the top. I was like, holy shit, dude. Chill <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no definitely oh yeah i felt that way with her the entire movie yeah um yeah well, i have i actually have a bit of trivia about this movie so um a gin i looked up gin and a gin is uh basically something they're invisible uh creatures um in uh in early pre-islamic arabian religious systems and they were mm -hmm. so they were in you know arabian um mythology pre-islamic right um mm -hmm. in the middle east and then they were actually adopted into islam um once islam uh, became a thing um you know and, and then of course they gave rise to the whole idea of genies and and all that mm -hmm. stuff it, it it would seem at least uh, mm. which is interesting. Um, but I think that's interesting. You know, that's the thing when you study, uh, religion, mythology, you go back and you look at cultures and how different religions kind of borrowed from each other or certain religions borrowed from folklore and myths and stuff, earlier myths. Um, mm. you start to realize, um, how fake <laughs> religion is, uh, cause you yeah. can see, the way these stories are built and everything. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I'm not trying to be a hater, but you know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's it's right there, guys. We can, yeah, we can no, see just, it. it's it's there. It's fucking right there. Um, but yeah, the the this movie was fucking ridiculous. Is there anything that you can think about, like any highlight that you can think, like, oh, this is like the most fun I had in this movie at this point. I really like the opening scene um, with all the crazy shit that's happening. Oh, yeah, dude. That skeleton that came out of that guy. You know that scene? Oh, yeah. That was nuts. That was great, man. That was nuts. I wrote that down. I was like, oh, shit. That skeleton scene was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. It was like his skeleton became separate from him. Like, had yeah. a mind of its own. That was Yeah, weird. it was awesome. That was <laughs> fucking great. The effect for that was awesome, too. Yeah. Yeah, no, it yeah. definitely was. Just all that crazy shit that was happening in the beginning. It was just because because it was the the guy's wish at the beginning was you know show me what you can do or show me uh you know uh I forget what he exactly he said he said show me spectacle or something mm -hmm. yeah that was it yeah that was and it something like that and the gin it just showed you how fucking messed up the gin's mind is because it was just all yeah. this random it, it was almost like a child just with a vivid violent imagination <laughs> mm -hmm. um and then uh i will say that there was a part with um robert england when he like vomits out that oh, big yeah. black gooey thing that felt really yeah that was a cool effect but it fe also yeah. felt really out of left field yeah it was just like why why did he why did he do that you know yeah like, why that thing you know yeah it it, it yeah. just felt really random to me, yeah. Despite it was despite it being kind of cool, yeah. Uh -uh. But I I think that's what I have to say about this movie though that it's like this movie was like the least scary. Oh yeah, it wasn't, wasn't that, scary at all. No, this movie was <laughs> fucking scary at all, man. It except wasn't for that scary one at all. scene. It, yeah, no, exactly. Except for that one scene at the beginning with that guy when he releases his gin. That's it. It wasn't scary at all. And that the the gin was like more interesting than scary. I was more like, oh shit, I want to keep watching this guy just do random shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. And and 
and result to the most obvious answer, you know. <laughs> he felt Cause, very cause every, much like a Rick and Morty character. Yeah, dude, absolutely. But also, like, everything he does is, like, the most, like, oh, yeah, that's what he did, you know. <laughs> when the lady goes, like, oh, yeah, I want to be beautiful for her. Oh, I want to turn you into a mannequin. It's like, oh, who would have thought that that's what you were going to do? Who yeah, thought, I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah. Blinds oh, the guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut your eyes. You know, I'm gonna make him into skin. Or like, oh, who would have thought that's what you were gonna do? Like everything he does is like the most like, oh, of course. You know, when that guy tells him like, ah, oh, yeah, I want to escape. He he puts him in a box. You know, like in the Houdini box where he has to escape. You know, it's like, oh, okay. You know, great. You know, that's wow. a good example. That's a good example yeah. of what I was trying to convey earlier and completely failed. Um, yeah. was that felt like cheating where it's like eh, you're not really granting his wish no you're, you're just doing some random shit like you're like the other guy spinning he... his words but you're spinning them too yeah. much to where you're not exactly. even you're cheating you know yeah because if you're gonna do the other the, guy if you're gonna do the be careful what you wish for thing like the whole monkey paw yeah. thing basically it still has to grant yeah. the wish otherwise it's cheating right Right, because at the very least, like even though that scene was goofy with like the plane crash, at least he was granting the the, the guy's wish, you know, <laughs> yeah. in like in a roundabout way, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, that plane crash was just fucking stupid because like you can see that, they, that you can see that they just cut to an explosion. It's not that the fucking plane explodes; they oh, yeah. just cut to an explosion, and the explosion they cut to sounds completely fake, and it's coming from downward. It goes like downward up, you know. So it's like they just and I like looked at that. I like frame by frame. I was like, okay, here's the plane, and then it immediately cuts to an explosion. <laughs> you know, fucking stupid. I was like, man, this is fucking stupid. This is the stupidest shit. Um, there's like, ah, this is like lazy. It's like if you couldn't afford to do this, why even try? Like, why you could have just implied that it happened. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, at some point the genie was just like, "Fuck it, I don't care." Like, if, if people are asking me for wishes, I'm just gonna just take one word out of that wish and be like, "This is what I'm interpreting this as." <laughs> I'm gonna, the genie is not a genie; it's an interpreter. It's like, "Oh, I'm interpreting this as this." So yeah. this is what I'm gonna do with that. You know, you give me this information, and I'm processing it this way. Yeah, and by the end, people were wishing for things, and he was just basically like, "Fuck off." <laughs> Genie's that, that genie is probably the reason, you know, in a, in a, in this fictitious imagination of this world, genie created lawyers, you know, that genie created like really <laughs> thick documents <laughs> that yeah. go like, "Oh, this is this, and that is that, and it's just the fine print, and you can't do that because we didn't agree on that, genie." You only have visitations from Monday to Friday. You know, you can't be here in the weekends. You have to be 50 miles away, you know. Uh, that's, a that. good interdimensional, that that's a good interdimensional cable uh, episode, <laughs> man, with uh, Jin being a, a lawyer. <laughs> uh, what's your rating, sir? Uh, Four. Okay. Yeah. I'll give it a... I want to say I'll give it a five. Yeah, that's really kind of where I'm at. It's like four or five. I'm like, yeah. it's like a toss up. I can toss a coin. I enjoyed the movie. I don't think it was horrible, but it was not good. Yeah, I don't want to say four because it deserves at least a five for me because mm. I was never bored. Mm. And if I'm never bored during a movie, that's In good. Some... Yeah, that, yeah, that's. I agree you, with you. Get, you. you I get, agree with you. Yeah. You know, you get a lot of props. You know. Yeah, no, uh, to me, it's really a toss up. You know, uh, when I was watching the movie, I was like, oh, it's a five. In retrospect, with all these complaints, I'm like, maybe this is not a five. I might give it to it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, folks, uh, Edward and I don't plan this, I swear. Um, no, we before, just... we, before we started this, Jake <laughs> sent me a text message. He was like, by the way, <laughs> I'm giving Wishmaster a five, and you better give it a five also. Yeah, give it the same, or I won't yeah. up upload this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I won't upload this episode. <laughs> I'll quit the show, I promise. Yeah. Your letterbox better <laughs> always reflect my opinions, Edward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your pick for next week, dude? My pick for next week is my first rewatchable pick okay Sweet. there's a movie that when i watched um i didn't really pay that much attention to even though i still rated it i think at the time i had a big i had a recollection of it. right now i can't remember anything um that happens in this movie 
And this is a movie that if you go on Letterboxd, a few of our friends have recently watched it. And all of the people that I follow have this movie like incredibly highly rated. Yeah. But if you look this movie up on Letterboxd, like in Rotten Tomatoes, it has like the horrible reviews. Okay. This is a definition of some sort of like cult movie. And I know it is because people actually do it. This movie actually does have like a cult love following. And this movie is the movie Belly. B-E-L-L-Y. From 1998, directed by music video director Hype Williams, huh? Starring DMX and Nas, and then a bunch of other hip hop and rappers. Huh? I've never seen. I've never heard of this. I don't think. Yeah, it's just an wow. hour and a half movie. Belly. The the um <laughs> line for it and letterbox says money, power, respect. But who's got your back? Hey. All right. It's next week's movie. It's next week, folks. Belly. Yeah. 1998, directed by Hype Williams. Get hyped. Yeah, get, get hyped. <laughs> yeah. Well, folks. But I think that's it. Next time on Film Tangents. Yep. We are out. We're out.